<coughs> hey guys, welcome. Now, just to let you know, I'm on StreamYard. You know what that means? StreamYard takes about 15 seconds, 20 seconds before you hear me say what I what I already said. So I'll say something, and then you'll hear it about 15, 20 seconds later. So I'm actually on my YouTube channel watching with you the live stream, and waiting to help me is Adam Seeker. So the reason why I decided to do StreamYard is because Adam Seeker, this blessing from the Lord Jesus Christ, someone I give a hard time to, he'll be able to help me share with you the images so not only will you hear it you'll see we'll open up a page and you're going to see and hear but we have a lot to cover but i need to put things in perspective again and by the way congratulations to our sister chloe wake she was on disciples of yahweh and christ channel please go to that youtube channel disciples of yahweh and christ do subscribe to that channel do support them. They are precious brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to get them more viewers, more subscribers. And I've also been told great things about Ben Beal's Corner. People have been saying some great things about him. They say he's a young Catholic apologist. And he knows his stuff. And he's passionate. And he's willing to debate the truth of his faith. So I've heard good things. And I want to bring him on. So do subscribe to Ben Beal's channel as well. But our sister Chloe Wake was there. Uh, why is he going to be here? I don't get it. Sm Smoky Saint, why is he here? I don't get it. Is there something happening? Our sister Chloe Wake was there talking about the rights of the unborn child, fighting for the rights for unborn children to live because from the biblical perspective, the God of the Bible is the God of creation who determines when life begins. The biblical perspective, life begins at conception. That human that's growing in the womb is a human life with value and dignity. And only God has the right, only God has the right to take that life away, not human beings. So abortion is murder. Abortion is murder. Let me say it again. It is murder. And this nation has a lot of innocent blood on her hands that they will answer to the living God and God will call them into judgment because of that. So we need to support these ministries and this young sister, she's only 20, who has such love for Jesus. Hold on, this guy. John, you know I'm on a live stream, right, John? I can't do it on a live stream right now, John. John, I'm going to cancel my live stream because you're more important, sir. Okay, I'm going to take a picture and send it to you, John. All right, buddy. Sorry. Sorry, guys. This is life. This is what happens when you go live. But I want you to just say time to say goodbye. Barnamino. Hold on, guys. I got to do something. Anyway, here we have a young sister. She's 20 who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And is passionate for the Lord of glory. And because she loves Jesus, she loves the unborn child. And she's fighting for unborn children to live and not to be murdered. So let's pray for her. Let's support her. Go to Disciples of Yahweh in Christ. Support that ministry. So hold on, guys. What's wrong with my singing, man? You guys are so haters. Do pray for me. I'm a little under the weather. Thank the Lord Jesus. I am doing better. I'm doing better right now. But I'm going to postpone my trip to Florida. <clears throat> I decided, you know what, I'll just wait. I was flying out, Lord willing, this Saturday. And I was going to be there to the 8th. But I've decided I'm not going to fly out this weekend. Lord willing, in a few weeks, I'll be in Florida, if God will. See, again, that's why in James 4, verses 13 to 17, specifically James 4, verses 13 to 15, we are told... That when you want to do something, say, if the Lord wills. Because you don't know. Your life is a vapor. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. You may die. If the Lord wills. So, again, I'm going to postpone it. So, Lord willing, I'll be there some other time if the Lord Jesus wills. But with that said, we have a lot to discuss. 
Sadly, my brothers and sisters in Christ, they mean well, but they're not helping me. What do I mean? We're going to pray in a minute. We got a lot to discuss again. So do me a favor. Take a moment to invite people. Share the link on your social media pages. Make this session go viral for the glory of Christ. And take a moment to pray and ask the Spirit to fill us for the glory of Jesus. And do not engage in side talks or side debates. Do not engage in side talks or side debates. Here comes the cat again. Yeah, have mercy, Lord. Destroy distractions of Satan, Father. Destroy distractions of Satan, Lord Jesus. Destroy distractions of Satan by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, yeah. Lord, have mercy. Anyway. <clears throat> Some of you mean well, but you're not helping me. I'll tell you why you're not helping me. I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. I don't want you to be zealous for me. I don't want you to be a Shemunian. Not that you intend to be. But sometimes, even with good intentions, we end up idolizing people. But just like many people ended up idolizing Anthony, making him more than he is, and which is why now God is humiliating him. And you'll, you'll see why I say that. You'll see why I say that. You are not of Sam Shamoon. I read the verses yesterday. I know we're creatures of repetition. We need to repeat something over and over again until by the grace of God's spirit, it becomes second nature. You are not of Sam Shamoon. You are not of David Wood or Anthony Rogers or Michael Brown. Please don't be zealous for my glory. Don't attack those who attack me. Don't defend me. Here's what I'm going to encourage you. Here's what I'm going to encourage you. Be zealous for the glory of your God who doesn't need you. Be zealous for the glory of the Lord Jesus. Be passionate for the gospel of Jesus Christ and love the church of Jesus Christ. Defend her honor, protect the gospel, and proclaim the glory of Christ. Please, not me. The reason why I'm going after, and again, I'm going to be very direct now because he's demonstrated clearly if you guys still doubt it if you guys still doubt it he's demonstrated he's actually of the seed of the devil he is a dog and like a dog god is handing him over to his vomit because he thinks he's witty and sarcastic but he doesn't understand this is god handing him over to humiliation and destruction much like his brother in doctrines of demons jimmy muhammad white and if you think that's harsh i'm not being mean I'm going to show why. I'm going to use his own words to demonstrate why I'm saying this. You do mean well when you try to tell me this person is attacking me or this person's mocking me. I know you mean well. Stop. I don't need to know that. Who cares they're attacking me? If the Lord Jesus wills, I'll get around to exposing them because they're Bible perverts. They are the seed of the devil. And watch. I'm using Anthony's words against him. You'll see in a minute, I'm not lying. They are seed of the devil. They are like Cain, who belonged to the evil one. They are like Pharisees and the Judaizers. And this is why I call Anthony now, Anthony Coppersmith, Alexander Rogers. If you don't know why, because he's like Alexander Coppersmith and Hymenaeus, two tools of the devil that opposed Paul and hindered Paul by preaching false doctrine that spread like gangrene, like cancer, and tried to trouble Paul and add to his afflictions, whom the Lord Jesus disciplined and destroyed. Anthony is coppersmith. He's Alexander Rogers. And I'm going to document everything I'm saying. I'm going to document everything I'm saying. Be patient. It's not slander. I'm not angry. Because one of the tactics of Anthony coppersmith and vocab Hymenaeus Malone is, this is common among Calvinists, and I'm going to prove it to you guys. Everything I say, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to document. When they can't refute you intellectually, they can't refute you exegetically, then they resort to slander and trying to bring out your dirty, dirty laundry. I'm going to prove that because that's what Anthony's brother in satanic teaching, his fellow seed of the serpent, Jimmy Muhammad White, and Jordan Hall did to Ergen Kainer, resulting in Ergen Kainer getting into a divorce, being fired from being the president of Libertyville, Liberty, I'm sorry, not Libertyville, Liberty, and his son Braxton committing suicide. And it's not slander. It is facts. I'm going to show it to you. We're going to see it. This is why I asked Adam to join me, to help me to 
bring up these links so you can see them with your own eyes, not just here. But for the record, Adam is not against Anthony, nor is he for me. Adam is not here because he's against Anthony. And I told Adam, you are not for me. You're not against Anthony. Be zealous for the glory of Jesus Christ. All he's going to do is help me show you because I still need to learn how to bring up these <clears throat> links so that you can see them and I can share them with you. So he's not for me. He's not against Anthony. He is not of Shimon or Anthony. He is of Jesus. And he's here just to help me to help you for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, I was told that Anthony made a video depicting me as Hitler. Now, I know what he's doing. See, he wants me to react. He wants me to say something. And I am, but graciously by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that he can then go around saying, see, Sam is not well. He's a misfit like his brother in arms, Hymenaeus Malone of the seed of the serpent of the devil did. So they don't deal with the arguments because Anthony got humiliated. Anthony got humiliated. William exposed him for quoting a fraudulent statement falsely attributed to Jerome by his spiritual daddies, the reformers, when it was actually a statement by Pelagius. Then he got further disgraced and humiliated when Perry Robinson, this orthodox beast who's coming back again, he's coming back, Lord willing, January 1st, he's coming back to again put Anthony Rogers in his place. Now, Perry Robinson and William used to be Calvinists. They were reformed. Thank the Lord Jesus, they saw why Tulip is a doctrine of Satan from the pit of hell. Thank the Lord Jesus they left, and now they're following apostolic traditions. That doesn't mean they're in communion, but still, at least they recognize their churches do go back to the apostles. They're a schism, but they do go back to the apostles, unlike Anthony Rogers' spiritual daddies. So when he got exposed for being stupid enough to quote a reference that he trusted his spiritual daddies, were not deceiving him into attributing it to Jerome and turned out wasn't Jerome. It was a quote from Pelagius. He got humiliated. Now I gave him the benefit of thought, doubt and I thought he was going to be gracious enough and humble and say, I'm mistaken. I'm wrong. Lord, forgive me. I won't make that mistake. But because he claims to see like his spiritual fathers, the Pharisees, his sin remains and God is now humiliating him. Like a dog, God is handing him over to his vomit and filth and he's allowing us, and I pray I'm one of his servants, to then muzzle him and humiliate him. And it's going to get worse for Anthony. I'm being honest, it's going to get worse. Worse. So when you tell me he did a video, when you tell me he did a video that he depicts me at Hitler, that doesn't upset me, man. I told you, the guy thinks he's witty, sarcastic, but he doesn't know I'm a witty destroyer and a sarcastic destroyer. And I'm going to muzzle him. He doesn't know me. I thought he did. But let me tell you what that means. Number one, this is projection. Because Anthony's God is not the biblical God. For a long time, I've tried to bite my tongue about the five points of Calvinism and this depiction of God that troubled me because I too believed it. I was convinced it's scriptural. And I thank the Lord Jesus. He had mercy on me and did not condemn me in that lie, but he brought me out. So I want to be, I want to be, I don't know what's going on here. Let me just see. Uh, brother, I have nothing scheduled with you today, so I have no idea what you're talking about, mostly you and all that. I have no idea, Smokey. Why are you? I have no idea. You're confusing the heck out of me. Anyway, I don't know. Whether, I want you to understand why I was hesitant to call it for what it is, because I too believed it and I thought it was biblical. But God in his mercy was patient with me and brought me out. So I wanted to then show that same grace and patience to others who've been deceived by Tulip. Because at the end of the day, the God of Calvinism is not the God of the Bible. Any more than the Jehovah's Witness God is the God of the Bible. Any more than the Mormon God is the God of the Bible. Any more than Arius' God is the God of the Bible. Any more than the Jews who rejected Jesus, their God is a God of the Bible. And I'm going to show you, Jesus says to even to the Jews, you don't know God. Because if you knew God, then you would love me. 
right? But you do not know God, and he's not your father. He says, you are of your father, the devil. I'm mentioning that as it's ironic. He uses Hitler when his God is a glorified Hitler. What do I mean? I'm not being harsh. This is what we call projection and a Freudian slip on his part, because his God is a glorified Hitler. He's Hitler on an infinite level. Let me explain to you again how he insulted every one of you guys. I want you to understand how he insulted every one of you guys. If you are a Catholic, Orthodox, Coptic, Assyrian church, he just likened you to Nazis. I don't know. I don't know if you understand what he's doing. God is exposing his heart. And because of this, he's being used of the devil to slander brethren. And what God does with the evil of the devil and his instruments, he takes what the devil and his instruments like Anthony Coppersmith and 10, and he uses it for a greater good. He's now forcing the Orthodox to rise. He's now forcing the Catholics to rise and the Coptics and the Assyrian church to rise and come together to defend the honor of these apostolic churches. Orthodox Shahada just took a clip of Perry Robinson, which I'm going to be uploading and I'm going to be playing to muzzle him because you know what he's saying guys let me tell you i'm not trying to instigate i want you to understand yes it is a damnable heresy tulip but that doesn't mean everyone who embraces it is damned because many do so in ignorance and with good motives and god has mercy on them the lord jesus has mercy on them the holy spirit has mercy on them like he did on me and others okay i want you to know what he means by that you understand what he means He's saying we are worse than Hitler and the Nazis because why? Hitler murdered, they say, 6 million Jews and 7 million others and gassed them. Okay. But Hitler only destroyed their bodies. He couldn't destroy their souls. By likening me to Hitler and all of you who believe like me, he's saying we are worse than Hitler. We are worse than Nazis because we are responsible for murdering millions to hell, destroying them spiritually. You understand the slander? You understand his real view about you guys? Pray I keep it off in Jesus' name. Ryan, ask the Holy Spirit to give me perfect self-control to keep the weight off and not gain the weight and keep exercising until the Lord takes me home in Jesus' name. You understand what that video exposed him for really feeling? And who do you think is allowing this dog to bark? Like a dog, the true God is handing him over. The true God is handing him over. Oh, man, no, Smokey, hold on. Let me just do this real quick. Sorry about that, brother. Sorry about that. Pick up Smokey real quick, brother. I want to show you that. That's a troll. Man. Hold on, guys. Distraction. After distraction. Brother, that's, yes. not, that's not, not me. Smokey. Yeah, Smokey, that's not me. That's a clone using my account. Check. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Thanks no, listen. Check. Me. My Shimon is capital S. This is lowercase. So warn people, please. <sighs> warn I people. I'll make sure to mention it in the next show. I'm so sorry, No, no, it's brother. okay, brother. You. Hey, man, I would... I, I actually consider you on the same side so i don't go after you so don't okay. don't think it and anyway well, god bless you brother same here I do me a favor though you, let so. people know there's a clone using my name but notice my s is capital his is lowercase got it okay All right, brother? No, it, that's where i got bad. confused i'm so sorry that's Sam. okay bro. Have, have god, bless god bless you smoky you. saint we'll talk soon Take care, man. All right, bye -bye. yeah this brings me uh, another point there's a guy who's cloned my picture shamunian and people get him confused with me. But guys, this is why, this proves my point again. This proves my point again. You guys need to read more carefully, be more attentive. It's not enough to read. Read attentively. My channel, Shemun, has a capital S. His is a lowercase s. Come on, brethren. See, even there, you're killing me. Please ask the Holy Spirit to help you to read more carefully, to hear more carefully in Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you what <clears throat> Anthony just did. Anthony just helped us bury him. He has shown he's not a brother. 
he is the seed of Satan. He is like the Judaizers. He is like the Pharisees, like Arius. He worships a false god, and he's a promoter of false doctrine that he thinks is the true God. Now, that doesn't mean the work he's done in glorifying the triune God hasn't been amazing. I praise him for that. But remember one thing. Remember one thing. Paul condemned the Judaizers not because they believed in a different God. The Judaizers in Galatians believed the same God. They had the same Jesus. They had a different gospel. And Paul called them false brethren, right? He called them false brethren and the troubler of the brethren, right? So that means you can profess worship of the true God, the triune God, and still be a seed of the devil, a tool of the devil, and a dog, because you're preaching a false gospel. And Anthony's tulip is satanic. It's from the pit of hell. It's a doctrine of Satan, because he makes the God of the Bible a glorified Hitler, Hitler on an infinite level, who makes Hitler look humble. And I'm going to prove everything I said, because remember, in the wisdom of God, he allowed me to be a Calvinism to know how they think because he knew I'd come out by the grace of the Holy Spirit prompting me to expose these demons for who they are. Jimmy Muhammad White, Anthony Coppersmith, a.k.a. Alexander <clears throat> Rogers, and Vocap Hemenius Malone, they are of the devil now. They've made their intentions clear. They've exposed their heart. They're telling you what they think of you. In fact, I was told by my precious brother Ariel that he likened communion of saints to the worship of Roman gods. So you see how blasphemous and wicked this swine has become? Anthony has become? See, God is exposing this dog. And in his stupidity, he doesn't see it because God is sending him a spirit of stupor. He is allowing him to return to his vomit and allowing those who truly love the Lord and his church to arise against him and expose him. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So not only did he liken you to Israelite Baal worshipers, not only does he now liken you and the early church fathers like Athanasius to pagans who worship Roman gods because they seek the intercession of the saints, of angels, and the Blessed Mother, in other words, when you seek the intercession of Mary, you are no better than a pagan Roman who seeks and prays to a pagan goddess. He now likens all of you, he now likens all of you to Nazis. See how stupid this guy is? Tell me God is not doing to him what he's doing to Jimmy Muhammad White. That God is is handing this dog over to his vomit because God who knows the heart is exposing him. The man is of the devil. He's not your friend. And when you go to his channel, you're only promoting and helping him to grow. I guess maybe he's upset that I'm close to 50,000 and I'm growing by the grace of the triumph God. And some of his fangirls, like Michelle Bordeaux, came barking in the comment section. All they can do is, anyone who supports me must question themselves because I'm of questionable character because the way I address people. Anthony Rogers, yep. Anthony Coppersmith, Alexander <clears throat> Rogers. Uh, Joey Ninas, can you prove I'm deceived? Can you come call me on Skype and defend your satanic doctrine? Because, you know, I'll destroy you. Like I'm going to destroy Anthony Rogers slowly but surely. And folks, I'm not upset, but here's what you don't do. Do you want me to go forward? Do you want me to start my series on Romans 9, destroying the satanic butchering of Romans 9 by Calvinists like Anthony Coppersmith? Do you want me now to start my series, God willing, if the Lord wants me to do, on what true saving faith is and destroy the satanic butchering of Galatians, Ephesians, Romans by sons of the devil like Anthony Rogers? Do you want me to do that? Then... Guys, stop distracting me. Stop telling me he did a video. Of so what? Don't you see? That's only God allowing him to return to his vomit like a dog and exposing how he feels about you. Don't you understand that? Do you understand how he really feels about you? You who 
believe the saints are alive and glorified, who are creatures, not gods or goddesses, who because they're fully alive, the Holy Spirit makes them aware of your prayers, asking them to intercede for you. You are now likened to, you are now likened to pagans who worship Roman gods, according to this son of the devil. You are now likened to the Israelite Baal worshipers, Baal worshipers, because you're not that remnant of 7,000 that God spared from bowing the knee to Baal. And now you are Nazis because your gospel and your church murders people and damns them to hell. And in fact, if you want to see how wicked and low he is now succumbed to, he's joining his girlfriend, Mrs. Austin Powers, who now can't sleep at night. William and I are in his head, and I know why. Because William told me, every time Mrs. Austin Powers puts me or William in the title, he gets more viewers. Before he had only 20 and 30, now he gets 500,000 if I'm in the title and the focus of his subject. So Mrs. Austin Powers is bringing Anthony to expose my false gospel, once again showing what Anthony thinks of you guys. If I'm preaching a false gospel, that means you Catholics believe a false gospel. You Orthodox believe a false gospel. You Assyrian Church believe a false gospel. You Coptics believe a false gospel. You understand what he's saying? You are worse than Hitler and you are worse than Nazis, even though his God is a glorified Hitler, who's Hitler on an infinite level. Why? Because according to Anthony, his God already in eternity has chosen to create millions of people who he has no desire to save, but has predestined them to commit rape and all other atrocities so he can damn them and burn them for all eternity, making Hitler look like a choir boy and a saint. And this guy who worships a glorified Hitler, is calling me Hitler. You get it now? Isn't that ironic? This is why I say I'm going to cut him down and I'm going to use his wit and sarcasm to bury him like the Lord is now burying him. And like a dog, he's returning to his vomit. You get it now? You get it? Isn't it ironic? This is what we call projection. This is what we call a Freudian slip. Because his God is a glorified Hitler. He can't now blame his God for predestining me to be his enemy to destroy Tulip because everything's predestined, right? According to Calvinism, consistent Calvinism, I was predestined to leave Calvinism and humiliate Anthony like a dog. That's predestined. So he calls me Hitler, but his God is a glorified Hitler because his God is not the God of the Bible. It, he's not. Now, thank the triune God, not all Calvinists are filthy like Anthony or Jimmy Muhammad White or <clears throat> like <clears throat> Hemenaeus Malone. He is salty and angry that he got humiliated. Now, by the way, this is not slander because he came on my Skype. Remember two weeks ago, he Skyped me to say, it's not personal. That's what he said, right? It's not personal, this bantering. And to prove to you it's not personal, now watch how God humiliates these dogs. Listen to this, guys. If it's not, it, he, he said it's not personal, and this is just bantering. Okay, if it's not personal, you're not liking me to Hitler, which is actually your God, the God you worship, who's not the God of the Bible. Thank the Lord, the Caners are right. Your God is no different, no better than Allah of Sunni Islam. And he's not the God of the Bible. Thank the Lord. The true God is nothing like your God, even though you claim he's triune. That's the only thing you have. He's a glorified Hitler. But what does it say to you when he called and said, just to show that we're still friends, that when he needed help because his daughter was stuck in the airport, it's there. I'm not slandering him. He, he said it online. I wouldn't have mentioned it. He called me to make sure she was safe if she needed help. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? He said it. I got it recorded. About two weeks ago, he called on my Skype. You listen. Was it? What does it say about him? What does it say about Anthony Coppersmith, who, like 
Cain is of the evil one, that he would entrust his daughter to Hitler. You see how he's embarrassing himself. You see how stupid he looks, how demonic he looks, that God is handing this dog over to his vomit because the more he attacks, the more he humiliates himself. So you're telling me you entrusted your daughter to a Hitler. Oh, yeah, that shows how discerning you are. Because if I thought you're a Hitler and I thought you're not a brother, the last thing I would do is reach out to you to make sure my daughters are safe. I'd keep them far the hell away from you. But you see, he's only exposing his venom, his hate, because he's been humiliated. And his false gospel is being destroyed. And thanks to his barking, now the Orthodox are rising, the Catholics are rising, all the apostolic churches are rising, and a lot of Protestants are rising against them. And they're seeing, they're seeing how wicked and evil these hyper-Calvinists, these high Calvinists are, because they think they're part of the elite, even though they don't have absolute assurance of salvation. And the more they bark, the more the Lord allows us to muzzle them and feed them their own vomit like this dog. Okay? Now, let me document everything I've said. Let me document everything I've said. Are we ready? So keep that in mind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever. Unto ages of ages, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, bless the internet connection, the visual sound qualities. Perfect my ability to recall the facts of Scripture and all the facts necessary, interpret them correctly. Bless Adam and I to glorify Jesus and empower us to muzzle blasphemers, dogs who pretend to be your servants, but only blaspheme the true God, pervert his gospel, and slander the household of God. Use us to silence them and keep exposing them, these modern Alexander coppersmiths, for the glory of Jesus and save us from becoming like that. Save us from falling into scandals. Save us from our own sinfulness and from Satan. Save us from our flesh. Control our mouths and our tongues to never betray, deny, or blaspheme the Lord Jesus. We entrust our lives to you. We love you. We worship you. We depend on you, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me the health I need to serve the Lord for your glory. We trust in you in Jesus' name. All right, let's begin. So let me come, and for I'm going to say, I'm going to confirm. Now we're going to bring up my brother here. How you doing, brother? I'm doing very well, brother. How are you? Yes. And I just made it clear, you're not of Shimon, you're not Rogers. You're just here to help me to put up the links, because I haven't learned that. You're for the glory of Jesus, and you are zealous for his church. That's all you are doing here. Okay. So Absolutely, now, brother, brother. No doubt about it. <laughs> I'm going to give you some links to put up. Now, lest people think I am exaggerating what Calvinism teaches, here you go, from the horses' mouths. This is why, brethren, you need to praise God for all these people are leaving Calvinism in droves because they're seeing how satanic and wicked and filthy it is. It's from the pit of hell. It's a perversion of Scripture. Leighton Flowers, whom Calvinists hate, used to be a five-point Calvinist. Perry Robinson used to be a five-point Calvinist. Louise Dezone, this young man, up-and-coming Catholic scholar, used to be a five-point Calvinist. Michael Brown used to be a five-point Calvinist. Robert Genis used to be a five-point Calvinist. <clears throat> Scott Hahn used to be a five-point Calvinist. William Albrecht used to be a five-point Calvinist. Tim Stratton, we all used to be five-point Calvinists until the Lord Jesus showed us it is a demonic doctrine. Perversion of Scripture, it's from the pit of hell. Now, they're more gracious in the way they say it. Leighton comes close to just coming out and saying it like it is. But brother here, I'm going to give you the link, and then you can open up the page. And I'll tell you where to go. Let me share a private chat. Here it is. Support Layton Flowers, Soteriology 101. Here's the link. Now, he's going to bring it up for us. If you want to mute yourself, that's fine. Give me a sec. All right. And I'll tell you where to go. The 
There you go, brother. Many of the Catholic apologists are ex-Calvinists, yes. Uh, you have to add to the screen. Okay, now, brother, uh, I'm going to tell you, you can mute yourself if you want. What I'm going to tell you to do, go to the 12-minute, 55-second mark and start playing. And then if you have to unmute, I don't know how it works. We'll see. Start playing. It says exactly what Calvinism means. He doesn't hide it. Doesn't be, be around. Pause it for a second. He's a, an academic. Try to put it up a little louder, can you? Okay, go ahead. Taking an intellectual, and so he didn't really care what people yeah. think about his partic particular particular. You guys here? But let's see if they can give us a one. Uh, that's the maximum I have. Yeah, that's good. That's okay. I think it's good enough because I can. Can you guys hear? So we can go on. Yes, go ahead. Play it now. Don't stop. Go ahead. Very few, you know, John the Piper MacArthur types would ever get up in a pulpit and say what you're about to hear these two Calvinists admit to. And they're going to say exactly what I've been saying so that you know, and I'm not misrepresenting Calvinism here. These are two scholarly Calvinists explaining what I have just said. Listen to them for yourself. It does exhaustively describe reality. Okay. So determinism isn't the thesis that some things are determined. It's the view that all things are determined. And we'll get, we'll get back to that because that matters in some of the formulation of the arguments. Okay, well, this, this raises a question then. So did God causally determine Calvinists like Kolkel, Crit, Muller, etc., to disagree with you? <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. All things are determined. So yes, God did causally <laughs> determine that. Uh, okay. okay, and it also raises another question. Uh, Leighton, you and 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 uh, yeah. I both used to be Calvinists. They say, right? Uh, they claim to be Calvinists. Back yeah, then, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. And I again, I can take that as their word. I didn't know them. I don't have any reason to doubt that they were sincere Calvinists in the past. But yes, to answer that question again, he's asking. Well, that raises a big question of conundrum somehow for the Calvinists. Okay. Uh, you know, did God determine us to leave Calvinism? And yes, uh, I take them at their word. I say, yes, God determined that too. Uh, determinism means all is determined. Uh, so just get this out of the way. Uh, determinism means that everything is determined. So it makes no sense to ask, well, did God determine that? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. The, answer, the answer is yes. Okay. So there you heard it for Plus. yourself from Plus. one of the... Okay. If you don't know who Eli Ayala is, he is a passionate Calvinist who has a podcast and a YouTube channel that he interviews James White and others. And if you want to know who Guillaume Bignon is, he was an atheist who converted to Christianity, became a diehard five-point Calvinist. He's the atheist David Wood interviewed on his channel. I'm going to show you the link. He wrote a book defending Calvinism, and Calvinists praise him as being one of the most knowledgeable Calvinist, that he's considered a top-rate philosopher, theologian, and apologist. Do you hear what he said? True Calvinist belief? So Anthony Coppersmith, this satanic tool, believes what you just heard. Brother, rewind it again to 1255. Let's play it one more time slowly. And I gave, I put the links for you guys in the comment section. Play it again. So I want you to hear it again a second time. He's a, an academic and an intellectual, and so he didn't really care what people think about his partic particular, particular perspective. But very few, you know, John the Piper MacArthur types would ever get up in a pulpit and say what you're about to hear these two Calvinists admit to. And they're going to say exactly what I've been saying so that you know, and I'm not misrepresenting Calvinism here. These are two scholarly Calvinists explaining what I have just said. Listen to them for yourself. It does exhaustively describe reality. So determinism isn't the thesis that some things are determined. It's the view that all things are determined. And we'll get, we'll get back to that because that matters in some of the formulation <laughs> of the arguments. Okay. Well, this, this raises a question then. So did God causally determine Calvinists like Kolkel, Crit, Muller, et cetera, to disagree with you? <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. All things are determined. So yes, well, God did causally <laughs> determine that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, and it also raises another question. Uh, Leighton, you and 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 uh, yeah. I both used to be Calvinists. They say, right? Uh, they claim to be Calvinists. Back yeah, then, 
yeah 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 that's fine and i again i can take that as their word i didn't know them i don't have any reason to doubt that they were sincere calvinists in the past but yes to answer that question again he's asking well that raises a big question of conundrum somehow for the calvinist uh you know did god determine us to leave calvinism and yes uh, i take them at their word i say yes god determined that too uh, determinism means all is determined uh, so just get this out of the way. Uh, determinism means that everything is determined. So it makes no sense to ask, well, did God determine that? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Okay. The, answer, the answer is yes. Okay. So there you heard it Pause for it. yourself. Pause it. Now, did you hear? And if you want to know who he is, here, brother, I guys, I posted the link. Here's the link to David Wood's channel. We're going to come back to this clip. Show it to them, brother. Here it is. Thank you, brother. You are a blessing. You're helping me to help them. Let me uh, hear. Here it is. Bring this one up, this link up. Hear what he said? He said, in Calvinism, they believe the Bible teaches everything is predetermined. So Leighton Flowers leaving Calvinism, was that predetermined? Yes. Sam Shimon leaving Calvinism and treating Anthony as a satanic dog, was that predetermined? Yes. All of this is predetermined? Yes. So wait, you're telling me? There he goes. You don't need to play it. There he goes. Act 17 Apologetics. I just gave you the link. There is a young looking David, less hideously ugly than now. And there he is. That's the man that you just heard. That's him. Guillaume Bignon, an atheist who became a Christian who sadly promotes Calvinism. Okay. Sadly, yeah, United Victory. I played James White yesterday saying that even rape is predetermined by God. Yeah, United Victory. Go watch yesterday's session. I played the clip, clip where James White in a debate says, yes, that even the rape of a child is predetermined by God. Yes, yes. Okay. So let me explain what this means. Isn't it ironic? Anthony Coppersmith calls me Hitler when, according to him, his God created Hitler, predetermined Hitler to murder what is it, 13 million folks to gas them? Isn't it ironic, this hypocrite, this seed of Satan, who belongs to Cain, who like Cain belongs to the evil one, would have the audacity to compare me to Hitler in a way as trying to discredit me when according to him, it's his God who's not the true God. Again, let me be clear. It's not the true God of the Bible. It's a perversion of Scripture, just like Joe's Witnesses pervert Scripture and Mormons do and others, like Arius did, like the Judaizers did, thinking they're worshiping the same God. But according to him, his God created Hitler. His God predetermined Hitler would gas 6 million Jews and 7 million others, murder them because his God wanted a Hitler to exist and Nazis to exist so they can do these atrocities so that his God could then gas Hitler forever to show how powerful he is. See why I say like a dog, God is handing Anthony over to his vomit because in his arrogance, he doesn't know when to shut up. So we're going to have to muzzle him and shut him up by the power of the Holy Spirit whom he thinks he serves. You see what I mean now? So that's why I'm not upset. He thinks I'm upset. He doesn't understand. I'm feeling sorry for him. Because I used to think he was a brother, and he was smarter than that. But you heard it, right? This is consistent Calvinism. You heard what Guillaume said. Yes, let's get this out of the way. Yes, in Calvinism, determinism, which is what we believe, everything's determined. So Sam Shimon was determined to leave Calvinism. Leighton Flowers was determined to leave Calvinism. <clears throat> Tim Stratton was determined to leave Calvinism. Michael Laughlin was determined to leave Protestantism. I, someone said he may have been a reformed Christian. God determined for all these people, Perry Robinson, Father Josiah Trenham, all of us to leave Calvinism. So why are you condemning us? After all, according to your perversion of Romans 9, you Bible butcher, who can resist God's will? Why does he find fault? Who are you, a man, to question God? So who are you, you son of the devil, to question God for predetermining me to become a Hitler in your eyes. Your God predetermined me to do this. So who are you to question God? Are you saying God made a mistake? That he predetermined me to be a spiritual Hitler to damn people? 
Your God predestined me. I have no choice, you son of the devil. You see how stupid he looks now? You see how embarrassing it's becoming for Anthony Coppersmith. You see, understand how embarrassing it is? He thinks he's funny and witty, and his fanboys that worship at his feet, they're going to encourage him only to his humiliation. Okay? Francisco, I'm actually excited because I'm burying demons and their de demonic doctrines. Are you also a son of the devil who believes in tulip? Come so I can bury you because it will be predetermined for me to bury you. So don't be upset. And wasn't it predetermined for me to be emotional, according to your system? Thank the Lord. He saved me from the system. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, brother, let's go back to the clip again with Leighton. Let's go back. This is what Anthony believes. Now, bring it up, and I'm going to tell you where to play from. We played this yesterday, but now you're going to see the visual. Seeing the visual is going to break your heart even more. Start playing from the 17-minute, 25-second mark. 17-minute, 25-second mark, and play. It just doesn't work. When, when you truly lay out determinism, compatibilistic determinism as it is, it is fatalistic, and it leads many people astray. It mean, leads, leads many people uh, to, to abandoning the faith, and it, it can be very dangerous. <laughs> We've played this clip uh, several times before on the broadcast, but before you listen on to John Piper's answer, this is why I want you to understand the significance of this topic and the, the significance of what Calvinism can lead. I'm not, I'm not trying to say every Calvinist is going to go the way that this particular gentleman went. I'm just saying that there's a danger of it, and you'll hear why he gives the philosophical and, and reasons, his own emotional reasons for rejecting, and he even gives mm -hmm. Calvinism as his excuse this is Derek Webb, who was the lead singer for Cademan's Call, wrote a lot of Calvinistic sounding uh, uh, songs back in the day, back when I was in my, my college days. He's close to my same, same age. He was listed as the top 125 most influential people uh, in the Gospel Coalition and the movement of, of the spreading Calvinism, uh, that he was listed in, in the top 50, in fact, of that. And that, that means that this guy had a significant role within uh, the, the theological framing of many people through his songs and listen to him now as an atheist and see if this is listen. not significant for us to discuss. And with my Christian friends who try to convince me of this, I say, listen, like, I don't know why you're trying to persuade me hmm. because your own Bible says it's a gift that it's a gift. It's the work of the spirit start to finish. It's a, it's the, a removing of a heart of stone, a replacing with a heart of flesh. That is not something you can do for me. Yeah. So if it's true, we're both depending on the spirit to show yeah. up. I'm literally in the grave next to Lazarus, yeah. waiting for to the hear, waiting, grave. waiting to hear my name. Yeah, and I'm going to lay in there dead till he shows up. Yeah. Somebody asked me uh, near the beginning of this year, living Christian, well, what would it take for you to believe? What would it take for mm. you to believe in God? That's easy. God would have to give me faith yeah. Yeah. because um, I can't yeah. reach out and yeah. grab it. What it would take is a miracle. It would take a miracle. Yeah, it would. Like, end, end what, 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 what does it take for a dead man? to come out of his, to come six feet out of the ground. Yeah. It takes someone to dig him out, yep. to open the box and revive him. Breathe into his nostrils. And, and the Bible makes it very clear that there is nothing less spiritually than that going on yeah. in salvation. Absolute new life. New life from death to life. Yeah. And that's what would be required. Yeah. And and I I, I And I'm open to that. it. I'm, I mean I'm oh, literally yeah. I'm literally in the grave waiting to hear my name. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. If, that, if that's the Because if there is going to be a work of the spirit going on I want it. And I won't be able to resist it. And yeah. I can't call out for it. Yeah. I cannot coax him over. Yeah. Either my name is written in the book of life or it's not. Yeah. And and I mean, so if we're gonna really get into the language, the hard language of the Bible, provocative as it may be, mm -hmm. like I'm had to, I got to a point, I don't like binary ideas or statements, but yeah. there's a few that feel emotionally like they are, yeah. although maybe they're not. But there's a point where I said, you know what, maybe, maybe God made me and fashioned me for destruction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, best of Because he, because he, he says he does that. Jacob, I have loved; Esau, I've hated, through, for the good pleasure of his own will. That's right. And will. and he receives no counsel but his own about yep. that. And so there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to change his mind about it. So maybe it's all real, and I'm just not chosen. That clip breaks Pause my right heart. There. Okay, here Aunt Leighton said that clip breaks my heart. We're going to play it one more time. I'll let Leighton make his points. What is Leighton showing you? Is refuting Calvinism important? 
This comes from one of his programs. Is this debate about Calvinism necessary, important? And Leighton says, yes. Why? He goes, because Calvinism leaves men with the excuse to just blame everything on God, saying, well, hey, God predestined me anyway. I have no choice. And he's saying Calvinism, in not so many words, is a cancer. It's gangrene. It's like the gangrene, the cancer of Alexander Coppers Coppersmith and Hymenaeus, the fathers of Anthony Rogers. And what do you do with cancer gangrene? You need to cut it. You need to destroy it. You need to kill it before it poisons the whole body. Why is it a gangrene? Because you see, Derek Webb was a consistent Calvinist. He was a singer of one of the leading Christian bands that were Calvinists. And I showed it yesterday, and I'm going to bring it up again. I'm going to show it to you again. On the Gospel Coalition webpage, he is number 49 among the 125 most influential Christians on the gospel-centered movement. He's put there as being one of the most influential, number 49. Let me show it to you. I did this yesterday, but this is why I decided to use StreamYard. The benefit of StreamYard is you can see the images. So here it is, Gospel Coalition. Let me give it to you. 125 most influential. So let's do this. Let's go here. Let's do the search engine. Let me go there. Let me just get it for you guys. Here it goes. 125 top influences. And he's going to bring it up for you. Here, let me get it for you so you don't lie. And all the links were in yesterday's session. So do you see what God is doing, Anthony? He's handing Anthony over to his vomit and then using us to expose him for the glory of Jesus and why you need to stay away from him until he repents. Now, I'm not Anthony. I don't believe God predestines people to hell. So I do believe if he doesn't resist the spirit, he has a chance to repent. But according to his system, he's predestined, right? I'm predestined. So I'm predestined to humiliate him. He's predestined to be a stupid fool. And I'm predestined to hand him over to his vomit by the power of the Holy Spirit. According to his system, right? Here's the link. Open it up, brother. Am I lying? Am I slandering? Or I'm giving you facts from the horse's mouth? Who is Derek Webb? Let's see who Derek Webb is. When he brings it up, I just gave you the link in the comment section, folks. Who's Derek Webb? You see, it says the top 125 influences on the gospel centered movement. Here, you even have Jimmy Muhammad White listed. Now, go to number 49, brother. Number 49. Keep going. Scroll, scroll. Okay. Who is Derek Webb? Do you see it? That's the man you just heard who became an atheist. That's the lead singer of Cademan's Call. That's the man who saw, sang a song, Prove Me Wrong. Sometimes I feel maybe I'm not like, um, maybe I'm not chosen. You harden my heart like Pharaoh. He is among the 125 most influential Christians on the gospel-centered movement. He's still listed there, even though he's an atheist. Since at least 2017, I believe, he's number 49. See it? That's who you just heard. Now, brother, go back. Play it from where he starts, Derek Webb, the interview, so we can hear him one more time. Okay. <clears throat> Start where he starts an interview, when he starts speaking. So that's after, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Right at the beginning of it, play it. Can you go a little bit before? Okay, play it, then play it. As an atheist, and see if this is not significant for us to discuss. Hmm. And with my Christian friends who try to convince me this, I say, listen, like, I don't know why you're trying to persuade me. Hmm. Because your own Bible says... It's a gift. That it's a gift, it's the work of the Spirit start to finish, it's a, it's the, a removing of a heart of stone, a replacing with a heart of flesh. That is not something you can do for me. Yeah. So if it's true, we're both depending on the Spirit to show yeah. up. I'm literally in the grave next to Lazarus, yeah. waiting for the to hear, waiting, waiting to hear my name. Yeah, and I'm going to lay in there dead till he shows up. Yeah. Somebody asked me uh, near the beginning of this year, of living Christian, well, what would it take for you to believe? What would it take mm. to believe in God? That's easy. God would have to give me faith yeah. Yeah. because um, I can't yeah. reach out and yeah. grab it. What it would take is a miracle. It would take a miracle. Yeah, it would. Like, end, end what, 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 what does it take for a dead man 
to come out of his, to come six feet out of the ground. Yeah. It takes someone to dig him out, yep. to open the box and revive him. Breathe into his nostrils. And, and the Bible makes it very clear that there is nothing less spiritual than that going on yeah. in salvation. Absolute new life. New life from death to life. Yeah. And that's what would be required. Yeah. And and I I, I and I'm open to that. it. I'm, I mean I'm oh, literally yeah. I'm literally in the grave waiting to hear my name. Yeah. Anytime. Any if, that, if that's the picture. Because if there is going to be a work of the Spirit going on, I want it. And I won't be able to resist it. Yeah. And I can't call out for it. Yeah. I cannot coax him over. Yeah. Either my name is written in the book of life or it's not. Yeah. And and I mean, so if we're going to really get into the language, the hard language of the Bible, provocative as it may be, mm -hmm. like I'm had to, I got to a point. I don't like binary ideas or statements, but yeah. there's a few that feel emotionally like they are. Yeah. Although maybe they're not. <laughs> but there's a point where I said, you know what? Maybe maybe God made me and fashioned me for destruction. Yeah. 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 That's what. Because because he. Because he says he does that. Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated, through, for the good pleasure of his own will. That's right. And, and he receives no counsel but his own about yep. that. And so there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to change his mind about it. So maybe it's all real and I'm just not chosen. That clip breaks my heart every time I... You hear it? I want you to hear now Leighton Flower's heart. He used to be a Calvinist like me. And thank the Lord we now see. We're not blind like Anthony Coppersmith. Did you hear it? You see what he said? This man knew Calvinism. And what is he saying to Christians? Because he knew Calvinism and thought the Bible teaches Calvinism like Anthony Coppersmith. This is the God that Anthony wants you to worship. A glorified Hitler who's Hitler on infinite level. Thank God that's not the God of the Bible, even though at one time I did. So when I thought this was the God of the Bible, I would never say he's Hitler. But now that God showed me I was deceived by Satan, Anthony's God makes Hitler look like a choir boy. Because Hitler was predetermined by Anthony's God to do what he did. You hear what Derek Webb said? Do you hear what Derek Webb said? He said that, why are you preaching to me? Because he was taught Calvinism and he thought this is what the Bible teaches. There's nothing you can do to make me believe. I'm a man in the grave. I'm dead like Lazarus. God would have to speak life to me and command me. And if he command me, then I have no choice to believe. So you're wasting your time. You can't make me believe. You can't make me repent. I may not be chosen. Maybe God predestined me to be an atheist. How would Anthony Coppersmith, who belongs to Cain, like Cain, who belongs to the evil one, respond to this man? He can't. You know how I know he can't? Because that happened to me. When I used to be a Calvinist, I had two people throw in my face. One guy who fell away said, hey, well, it was predestined, right? It was predestined for me to walk away, right? So why are you being upset? I did not answer that. I had no answer. I didn't. I'm being honest with you. Neither does this clown. But isn't it funny how God hands him over to his vomit? He's think, he thinks he's making fun of me. He thinks he's belittling me. He doesn't understand every time he opens his blasphemous, arrogant mouth, the Lord is only giving us more opportunity to expose his heart, his venom. He's not your brother. Don't forget what Anthony has now accused all of you. Let me repeat. We got some more some more comments and clips to play. Anthony just said, if you don't believe in his gospel, sola fide, which was unknown in the church, if you believe the gospel of the Catholic church or the Orthodox church or the Coptic church or the Assyrian church, then you are spiritual Nazis. <clears throat> you are Israelite Baal worshipers. And if you believe in the intercession of the saints, like, all the church fathers did, and he can't quote someone denying that or opposing it, <clears throat> then you are like the pagans worshiping and calling upon the Roman gods. So that means Athanasius and others who sought the intercession of the saints, who sought the intercession of the Blessed Mother, they are pagans who deified the saints and replaced the pagan gods with the saints. That's what Anthony thinks of you. That's what Anthony thinks of you. Now, brother, let Leighton speak from his heart why we have to oppose Calvinism. This is what Leighton is saying. Do we need to oppose Calvinism? You better believe it because Calvinism is producing atheists who will tell you, hey, it was predestined. You can't make me believe. You can't make me see. I can't repent. I may not be chosen. Maybe God made me. One of those vessels of destruction. Don't waste your time because if I'm chosen, I'll come back to faith, right? Leave it to God. 
And Leighton, look what he says. Keep playing. I'll tell you when to stop. Because it really reveals why this is such an important topic. Now, obviously, John Piper believes it's an important topic for different reasons, which he's about to get into. But I believe it's an important topic because it can lead people into this kind of false sense of believing that it's ultimately God's responsibility as to whether I believe or not. It's not my responsibility as whether I cultivate my heart or I listen to the Father, or I read his word or I walk in him so as to grow in my faith. No, that's that's his responsibility. He's going to do it all. I'm just, I'm just laying here by Lazarus waiting for him to, to do it all for me. And he, he's, he's putting onto God what God has put onto him. And that, that's one of the reasons I believe he has walked away from the faith. He's walked away from the Christ, Christianity that he grew up believing and holding dear. Why? Because he didn't take responsibility for cultivating his faith and growing in his faith and his relationship with the Father. And that can be a dangerous thing for those who are not taking responsibility for what God says you're responsible for. That's one of the reasons we're also doing this program is to help people to begin to own and understand that you're Amen. you're responsible to humble yourself, as the scripture says, over and over and over again. And there's a good reason that Jesus marveled at their unbelief, as the scripture says. The, why would Jesus marvel at something they were born morally incapable of doing? It doesn't make any sense for Jesus to marvel at unbelief. They're born unable to believe if Calvinism is true. The reason he marvels at their unbelief is because they are actively suppressing the truth in unrighteousness, but they don't have to. People aren't born unable to receive the light of the gospel, the truth. If, however, they reject the truth over and over and over again, they can grow calloused and hardened to it, but you're not born in that condition. And if you allow yourself to grow hardened, as obviously Derek Webb has, whose fault is that? Is that because God doesn't really love him? Is that because God determined for him to reject the Savior? Is it because God doesn't really provide through atonement for Derek Webb? Why? I say it's Derek Webb's fault. John Calvin's doctrine and John Piper's doctrine ultimately puts it back onto God. And so is Derek Webb, unfortunately. He's saying, this is really up to God. I can do nothing. Maybe I'm just destined for hell, he says. Maybe this is all real and I'm just not chosen. How devastating a conclusion is that. Let's go on and listen you know, to what John right Piper there. says. Uh, let me correct Kyle Lewis's slander of Leighton Flowers. I think you're another maybe tuliper. No, you're a liar and a slanderer. Kyle Lewis, you haven't listened to Leighton. This is why you're a liar, because he can't handle when he speaks the truth. He has said on his programs, and we're done with this clip. You can remove it, brother. He has said on his programs, not all Calvinists are hard determinists. He's got many shows where he says, not all Calvinists are hard determinists, but he shows you're inconsistent because you're cowards and you're liars and you're not men. You know why? And I know because I used to be a Calvinist. If you go back to your spiritual daddy, John Calvin, he was a hard determinist. So is John Piper. Yes, there are others who are not hard determinists but they are inconsistently so. And he even says that, and he says, then why even call yourself a Calvinist? In fact, he did that in response to see Michael Patton. See, this is how I know, Kyle Lewis, you're a liar, you're a deceiver, and a slanderer. So this makes me question whether you're a Christian. Why do you lie about the man? Because the man is destroying your satanic system. He's destroying your doctrine of demons because he's careful and he said it. In fact, go to Soteriology 101. Go to Soteriology 101, and you see he has a response to C. Michael Patton. C. Michael Patton, where he says C. Michael Patton is not a hard determinist. He's a soft determinist, but he's inconsistently so. And in his refutation to C. Michael Patton, he quotes John Calvin, who says to say that God permits things, is simply a cowardly way of saying that it's God who's decreed all things. Now, I'm giving the gist of the citation. So, Kyle, you're a liar and you're a filth. And by the way, this this was predestined. It was predestined for me to call you filth, you scum. So don't be upset. Don't be upset. Okay? So I'm just being consistent with your Calvinism. See what they do, brethren? This leads me to my other point. When you're destroying their doctrines of demons, their satanic perversion of scripture that makes God into a glorified Hitler, they then attack you, then they insult you, bear false witness of you, 
in order to try to get people not to take you seriously, go to Soteriology 101. How many shows has Leighton Flowers done, even with Tim Stratton, where he acknowledges, yes, I know there are Calvinists who are not hard determinists, but they are inconsistent because he goes to John Calvin to show that Calvin, from which you get the name of the system, Calvinism, was a hard determinist. He's mentioned that. And praise the Lord Jesus, you guys are unsubbing from Rogers and Vocab. All of you need to stop supporting these tools of the devil. They hate you. They don't think you're Christian. And I think that's another reason why Anthony the coward remained silent about what he really believed. Because he had the support of the Catholics and the Orthodox as long as he was going after Trinitarians. But you see, God exposed him. See, God is exposer of hearts. God is an exposer of hearts. The man never thought you were believers. He always thought you were just as bad as Muslims or <clears throat> as Joe's witnesses because you had a false gospel. But he didn't say it because he's a coward. He wanted your numbers. He wanted your support. But you see, God Almighty, who exposes heart, has exposed. So rejoice that the true God whom we love and serve by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we love the true God as he is and yield to the Spirit. He's exposing the chaff, the wolves, those who pretend to be Christian, ministers of righteousness, <clears throat> the Alexander Coppersmiths and their gangrene, because he's going to separate the false brethren from the true ones. And because of Anthony's mouth, he's now forcing Christians who truly love the Lord to come together for the glory of the triune God. Now, <clears throat> let me show you the pattern of Calvinists when they can't refute you. You saw it right here with Kyle, this dog. Okay? Thank you. I'm seeing people saying I've unsubscribed. May you all unsubscribe for the glory of Jesus. He's not your brother. He's your enemy. His God is more like Allah of Sunni Islam. No, I'm not, not slandering. Sunni Islam teaches Allah has predetermined everything, even those whom he'll create to damn to hell. Same thing as what John Calvin said about God. Now, thank God, John Calvin God is not the God of the Bible. He thinks he is. He's not. Let me tell you, and I'm going to now prove it. When Calvinists can't refute you, they will try to then air out your dirty laundry, slander your character to get people to no longer listen to you like this dog tried to do with Leighton Flowers. And he's a liar because I've listened to Leighton. He admits not all Calvinists are hard determinists, but they're inconsistent. That's the point. I'm going to give you a classic example that has come back to haunt Jimmy Muhammad White and Jordan Hall. Jordan Hall is another rabbi Calvinist who used to be best friends with Jimmy Muhammad White. <clears throat> Not long ago, you had Ergen Amir Kaner who were making the ranks in discussing Islam because they had a Turkish father and I believe a Swedish mother and Ergen Kaner, who was a very gifted speaker, and he was a professor at Liberty, went sharing his testimony. Now, sadly, sadly, this is true. Truth is truth. He started cooking up his testimony, lying about his testimony, and Jimmy Muhammad White caught on to it. And Jimmy Muhammad White went on a jihad against Ergen Kaner and for over a year would not stop. Now, the reason why Jimmy Muhammad White went after Ergen Kaner, go back into the archives, you'll see. Ergen Kaner and Amir Kaner, who are libertarian, free will Baptists, who are trying to stop the spread of Reformed baptism, not baptism, Reformed Baptist theology, because in the Southern Baptist Convention, there was a debate arising because there were some Baptists who were becoming Reformed, like James White, and others who said no. Our heritage is we believe in free will. Ergen Kainer opposed Reformed Baptist theology. He was against the five points of Calvinism. So was Amir Kainer. Ergen Kainer eventually became the president of Liberty, but he had to step down because of the scandal. Fueled by Jimmy Muhammad White using materials of Muslims to slander Ergen Kainer. Now, I admit, Ergen Kainer needed to be held accountable, but he was. But Jimmy Muhammad White didn't stop. Do you know why? Because Ergen Amir Kainer likened Jimmy Muhammad White's God to the Muslim God. He says, they said, basically, that the God you worship is no different than Allah. And Jimmy Muhammad White 
went ape and made it personal and went after him to the point that his buddy at that time, and now they turned against each other. Jordan Hall is an enemy of Jimmy Muhammad White, and Jimmy is an enemy of Jordan Hall. Even though Jordan, D. Hall, J.D. Hall, they were best of friends. J.D. Hall went after Ergen Kaner's son on Twitter. Braxton Kaner started harassing the young man and making fun of his father. Several weeks later, Braxton Kaner committed suicide. Not only did he commit suicide, Ergen Kaner and his wife ended up in a bitter divorce, and Ergen Kaner lost his job and has been in hiding ever since. You'll find him on Twitter, but this is the result of the venom, the hatred, the filth of these Calvinists. They make it personal. They go after you, bring out your dirty laundry in order to discredit you, and it reached the point that Braxton Kaner committed suicide. That's when Jimmy Muhammad White shut up like a coward because he knew and he was afraid he'd be held accountable for the jihad he started. Let me prove it to you if you think I'm lying. Here it is, main page. Here's the link. This is what they do. This is what they do. This is what vocab has been trying to do to me. Take clips where I cuss people out and insult them, thinking I'm going to lose sleep. You think I give a damn what people like you think of me? Brother, click on it. Open the page. All you need to do is go to Google. Go to Google and do Braxton Kaner, J.D. Hall, and this is what's going to come up. You see? Pastor laments tweets prior to youth's suicide. Baptist preacher fought with Braxer Kaner on Twitter. Baptist preacher J.D. Hall calls connection between Braxton and Golan. Scroll down just to show them. And I'm going to give you one in particular to show. Okay. This is the fruit of these Calvinists. Okay. Are you scrolling down, brother? Scroll down the page. Keep going slowly. Show them. Theological thuggery and Braxton Kaner's suicide. Past, pastor repents for interaction with suicidal team. You see where it says, in memory of Braxton Kaner, Moriel Ministries? Click on that. He did. He repented for the smear, but the damage was done, saying. And I'm not saying they caused anyone to commit suicide. But here's the thing. The young man was already troubled pestered because of all the online attacks by Muslims and Calvinists attacking his father's integrity, which resulted in his father having to be disciplined, which resulted in problems between his father and mother, and the man just got tired of living, the young man, and committed suicide. Show his face, brother, so they can see. You want to see, so you can see how handsome. That right there, that oldest boy, you see how handsome he is? That handsome young man got tired and committed suicide. Ergen Kane and his wife ended up in a bitter divorce. Now, again, I'm not saying J.D. Hall forced him to do it, but by persistently going after Ergen Kaner, going after his family, Jimmy Muhammad White's jihad and J.D. Hall's jihad with us because they were friends. And the pressure that this young man must have seen at home Father and mother fighting, father being discredited, father being disciplined, and they wouldn't relent. Do you know when Jimmy Muhammad White stopped his crusade against Kaner? When the son committed suicide. That handsome young boy. Right there. See? <coughs> so not only is Kurt Ergen discredited, you'll find him on Twitter. Reach out to Ergen and encourage him. Not only did he lose his wife, he only has one son, and his firstborn murdered himself. You got it? This is Anthony Coppersmith's group. This is the fruit of these hyper-Calvinists, these high Calvinists. If they can't refute you, they will attack you personally. Air out your dirty laundry to try to muzzle you. In other words... Just like their God is like the Sunni Muslim God, 
their tactics is just like the tactics of Sunni Muslims. Slander, discredit you, and bring out your dirty laundry. Here it is. I'm not lying. You saw it with your own eyes. You'll even find Jimmy Muhammad's white sermons against Ergen Kainer. Okay, we got it. You exposed his mistakes. Why didn't you let it go? Why didn't you leave it be? No, he would go after it. Every week on his dividing line, he had to say something. And I'm going to share a true story with you guys. True story. I met Amir Kainer, that young man's uncle, Ergen Kainer's brother, at Armitage Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. At that time, the pastor was Pastor Charles Lyons. And I have a dear brother named Dave Eccles who can confirm the story. Okay? Who can confirm the story. Dave Eccles has a ministry to Muslims. So he was asked to pick up Amir Kaner from the airport. I can call Dave Eccles. You want me to call him? Let me see. Well, I got to ask him for permission if he... So you know I'm not lying. Let me ask him something. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. So you guys don't think I'm lying. Hold on. Hey, brother. I just want to say something. Uh, you remember years ago when you picked up Amir Kaner from the airport? Yeah, I'm not mentioning you by name. I am on a live stream because people think I'm lying. Uh, they don't know who you are. I didn't say your name. Would you be able to say a lot? Yes, I did pick up Ergen Kainer from the airport. Yeah, I mean, you can, they'll hear you, but I just, I'm not giving your identity. I won't put you on speed, but I got to get your permission because I'm on live stream. Because some people think maybe I'm a liar and just name dropping. Okay, or let me put you on speaker. The only thing is it needs some context. I guess you'll see yeah, the context that. is that he was there in the Baptist yeah. church and you picked him up. Was that my, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So, yeah, I, I picked him up. He spoke at Arminist Baptist Church that morning. I had took him out for dinner, for lunch, and uh, and uh, returned him to the airport, perhaps, or back to the church in the evening. I don't think he left that day. Right. But anyway, yeah, I spent a good a good amount of time with him. Okay, brother. No, I just want to come. Thank you so much, brother. Yes, so thank you. And I'll talk to you afterwards. No problem. No problem at all. Brother. Thank you, brother. Okay, brother. Bye. Bye. Okay, you heard it right. See, I try to be as honest as I can. I try. I'm sinful and I'm imperfect. Did you hear it, right? You guys heard it? It's okay, brother. Don't worry about it. Why are you, why are you salty, Jeremy? You want me to block you too, you little sinner? Hey, his name's on the phone, brother. His name's on the phone. All right, did you guys get it? That was predestined, by the way, Jeremy. According to Anthony's God, it was predestined. Okay. I had asked this brother... Can you tell him if uh, he would mind me joining you? At that time, I was identified with James White. And he told, told my friend, he told my friend, I prefer not to. He didn't want to see me because I was affiliated, associated with James White. That night at the church after he spoke, I went up to him. And this was about two weeks after Braxton Kaner had committed suicide. So it was still fresh. I went up to my go brother. I'm Sam Shimon. Please, I want you to know, I have nothing to do with James White and what he did to your brother. I apologize. I pray the Lord comforts your family, and you'll watch. God's going to judge James White for what happened. You know what he said? He looked at me. He goes, "I hope he does." That's what he said. I told him God is going to judge James White for what happened, and he said, "I hope he does." Don't tell me the family doesn't blame Jimmy Muhammad White and J.D. Hall for their problems. This is what they do. They will slander you like Muslims. They will air out your dirty laundry like Muslims because they can't refute you. See? So is it a coincidence Anthony's adopting the tactics of Muslims when his view of God is identical to Sunni Islam's view of God? Same dirty tactics. Is it a coincidence that Hemenaeus Malone, Vocab Malone, is adapting the same tactics of Muslims when his view of God is identical to the Sunni Islamic view of God? Is it a coincidence? Same smear tactics and campaigns. Is it a coincidence? Can, can you tell me, is it a coincidence? Their view of God is the same. 
their tactics against those they can't refuse the same. So when Anthony, Anthony says I'm Hitler, ironic, his God is Hitler on an infinite level, a glorified Hitler. Because if Anthony's not a deceiver and a liar, like his father, the devil, and brethren, he's not a brother. He's a heretic. He's like Alexander and Hemenaeus. He's like <clears throat> Arius and the Judaizers and the Pharisees. He can repent and be a brother, but right now he shows he's not a brother. He is of the devil, and he's an enemy, and we need to call him out. He has the audacity to say, I'm Hitler, when his God determined Hitler would exist and commit those atrocities so God would then be glorified in destroying Hitler in a gas chamber that never ends. And he calls me Hitler. That means you must be Nazis. Isn't this a sign that God is handing this man over to his vomit like the dog that he is? Now, why do I keep saying he's a dog? Well, here, let me show you. I'm going to play the horse's own words from the horse's own mouth. And then we're going to go into Josiah Trenham. And brethren, I didn't start it. All the fanboys can attack me and say I did. They started it. But by the power of the triune God, we're going to finish it. They're going to be exposed because I'm not the only one exposing him. The Orthodox are rising. Glory to Jesus Christ for the Orthodox Church. The Catholics are rising. Thank the Lord Jesus for the Catholic warriors. The Coptics are seeing it and the Assyrian Church. This is why I pray these apostolic churches come together, squash their disagreements, and become one. Because when the apostolic churches become one, you will be invincible. You will be unbeatable. You will be impenetrable when you become one like you were before the 5th century. And this is why these demons don't want that to happen. May I be used of the Holy Spirit, the triune God, yield to the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit to do what I can to bring you apostolic churches together as one for the glory of the triune God. Okay? Now let's play the horse's mouth and we're going to play some Josiah Trenham and we'll be done. See, the guy thought he's slick, right? Yeah. Keep barking, my brother, as the Lord. My, when I say, bro, you're a brother in humanity, but you're an enemy. Alexander, you're an enemy. And I'm going to play a beautiful clip that Orthodox Shahada just uploaded, and I'm going to upload to my channel to show you that he's like the Pharisees and religious leaders who in their arrogance claim to be able to see, but in reality, they're blind. But because they say they see, God's judgment is going to be severe, which is why he's being judged and exposed. Now here, let's have this heathen, in his own words, expose himself. Here it is. Brother, let me get you this link. Let me put this down right here. And I'm going to tell you where to start playing. Yep, exactly Orthodox Shahada. Let me push, bring this clip up. Look what he said. And thank our brother Orthodox. And I actually, I mean this, brother. Thank you for your graciousness and putting up with me and not going after me because you know I'm on a journey and the Lord will show me the fullness of the faith because I want to be on your side and not against you. So thank you, Kai and Lewis, for being gracious enough to put up with my imperfections. And may the Lord keep using in my life as I seek his face and yield to him and know the fullness of the truth. Okay? And I mean this. I'm not saying this to tickle people's ears. I love the Orthodox Church. I love the Orthodox Church. May I serve the churches that have ancient apostolic pedigree until the Lord calls me home. Now, here's where we're going to play. Now, watch what Orthodox Shadda just said. When A.R. mocks the sign of the Holy Cross, and he just got buried for it because the same church fathers that he cites say that only demons shudder at the sign of the cross. So what does it tell us about Anthony? He is not mocking Sam. He is mocking Christ himself. Mocking the Holy Cross is an attack on Christians. It is satanic. Exactly. Now watch this. Brothers, start playing from the 14-minute, 35-second mark. Watch him bury himself. One of the things that happened, in fact, this is something that I wanted to start off with, is somebody was really put out by the fact that I referred to this as wicked folly. 
They said I was being uncharitable, and I'm I'm speaking in a way about Christian brothers that I shouldn't be speaking. Uh, but this is attacking entirely the wrong thing. It, it has me misunderstood to begin with. Uh, it seems to assume that I count as a brother people who attack Orthodox Christianity, right? It, it, it isn't the case that anything we, we call Christian. Do you see the arrogance of this man? He considers his tulip Orthodox Christianity. You talk about an arrogant demonic troll. His tulip cannot be traced earlier than the 16th century. And he thinks in his arrogance and ignorance, he's defending Orthodox Christianity. Fat, uh, the Shia want to debate your mother, Fat Komodo. They want to debate your mother and why she keeps doing muta when she's supposedly a Sunni. If you heard what I said yesterday, I will be calling him out once I'm done with all my sessions. But the Shia want to debate your mother on David Wood's channel. Why is she doing muta with them when she's a Sunni, Fat Amodo? Okay, but we're going to let him bury himself. We're going to give him enough rope to hang himself. Now keep playing, see what he says. He thinks he's defending Orthodox Christianity. Keep going. Christian is Christian. Christianity means something. And historically, Christianity has meant, among other things, that we believe in an omniscient God. Okay, again, Plus, truly and properly, not. Can he demonstrate prior to Augustine that historically Christians who believe in omniscient God believed in predeterminism? That God's omniscience meant God predetermined everything that takes place, every evil act, every immoral act, even the evil acts of Hitler. You see the disgusting liar and hypocrite that he is? He appeals to Christian history, a history that buries him and shows that he's a false Christian who preaches a false gospel, a history that shows they didn't teach sola fide or tulip, a history that shows prior to Augustine's debate with Pelagius, none of them believed that omniscience meant predeterminism because that was a Greek philosophical belief that things are pre predetermined. None of them believe that, and he has the audacity to appeal to the historic faith of the church to then attack open theists for believing that the future is open to God because Christians historically have believed that God is omniscient. When those Christians you're appealing to would condemn your determinism as a satanic corruption of Scripture, and the closest you get to is Augustine, but that's Augustine that's post Pelagius, pre-Pelagian Augustine was arguing <clears throat> along with the church that God doesn't predetermine all things because that was a Manichaean belief, a Gnostic belief that Augustine opposed. But it's going to get worse for this heathen. Finish it. Keep going. Uh, we're not talking about uh, innovative definitions of omniscience. We're just talking about the classic definition here. Uh, but so I want to begin just by making an observation and this, wow. this has, uh, Keep going, man. relevance beyond this particular issue. You, this, the applications of this are, uh, innumerable, uh, but it's a lesson I think that Christians need to learn, uh, especially, you know, we're reminded of this when we see people getting bent out of shape that somebody's actually being called. A heretic or something's actually being called heresy pause according to genesis 3 15 so you fanboys of anthony coppersmith listen to your master listen to your lord anthony don't get bent out of shape don't cry foul and whine like little girls when i call him a heretic a seed of satan because by the same measure you use shall be measured against you i'm only using his own measurement his own <clears throat> sarcasm and wit against him to bury him by the power of the triune God. So you sissies, his fanboys that cry like little girls, listen to your master, you Rogerites, <clears throat> listen to him. Don't get bent out of shape when I call him for what he is, a seed of the devil, a tool of the devil, a heretic, an enemy of God, a blasphemer, 
and a troubler of the brethren. Right? Did he say you're getting bent out of shape? No, this is very important because there's the seed of the righteous, the seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. And in his arrogance, he thinks he's of the seed of the righteous, the seed of the serpent. Go ahead. Keep playing. Consequent upon man's sin, right? Man uh, sinning against God and incurring guilt. We're told that God, as a judicial consequence, imposed enmity between the righteous, the seed of the woman, and the wicked, the seed of the serpent. God says to the serpent in Genesis 3, 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and hers. He will crush your head and you will bruise his heel. Now, ultimately, this has Christ in view, but also those who are in Christ are also uh, reckoned according to uh, him, that is, we are in him that seed. Uh, likewise, the wicked are, uh, uh, in general, viewed as the seed of the serpent, and we see that all throughout Scripture. Right In Genesis 4, you have the account of Cain, who was wicked. John tells us he was of the evil one, that of is, course. he was the seed of the serpent. Isn't it ironic, this predestinarian Calvinist? is saying that Cain is of the evil one. He's wicked because he murdered his brother. But it's actually his God that predestined that Satan would sin, predestined that Cain would murder Abel, predestined that Cain would belong to the serpent and would be a son of the serpent. So who's actually the evil one here? Is it the serpent or... Anthony's God, whom he thinks is the God of the Bible, God forbid such blasphemy, the true God is not his God. Isn't it ironic? And no, notice the humbleness. He thinks open theists are the seed of the serpent, whereas Mr. Righteous here is the seed of the woman, the seed of the righteous. But hold on. Didn't your God predetermine that they be open theists? So why are you finding fault with them? They can't resist God. This is God's will for them. Why are you then condemning them when this is God's will for them to be open theists? But finish it, brother. Serpent. Uh, he slew his righteous brother Abel. So already we see this enmity being worked out in history. And this is, you know, this carries through the entire biblical record. In, in fact, Scripture is reminding us of this over and over again. Now, uh, plus, you can stop yeah, right there. Is that the 17? Uh, is that we're at the 17 minute, 20 second mark? Did we go there? Yeah, that's it. We went over there. Okay. What is he trying to say? For his fangirls who burn incense at his feet, the Rogerites, like the Soloidians, he just told you, shut your mouth, you little girls, for complaining that I'm giving him a taste of his own medicine using the same measure against him that he uses against us, taking his sarcasm and stuffing it down his throat, which his God predestined for me to do, because he says that if you are a seed of the serpent, you're not a Christian brother. And therefore, I'm under no ob obligation to treat you with respect and dignity. Exactly. Anthony is a seed of the devil. Anthony, like Cain, belongs to his father, the devil. Anthony... His spiritual forebears happen to be the Pharisees, the Judaizers, the Arians, the Manichaeans. These are his true spiritual forebears. He's not our brother. He's not a Christian. He's not a seed of the woman. He's not a seed of the righteous. He's a seed of Satan. He belongs to Cain, who belonged to an evil one. And he wants people to believe in a God that he says predetermined to commit all these immoral acts, murder all these people, rape children, making Hitler look like a choir boy. So you sissies, don't complain when I do the same thing that Anthony does to others. Now here, let me show you the height of his hypocrisy. Vile, wicked, hypocrite, tool of the devil. Go to the 53-minute mark. And let's play for till the 54-minute mark. Sherry. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't mention this before, but one of the reasons I decided to do this 
was because of a number of issues. One is because somebody had messaged me on Facebook about uh, the fact that a number of people that they know are succumbing to open theism. And uh, Sherry was one of those. Uh, but I also, at the conference I spoke at, uh, one of the individuals uh, at the conference referred to open theism as uh, horrible theology. And then somebody said, you know, how dare you say that? <laughs> how dare you have the audacity to say that this position that charges God with ignorance and goes against what the entire Christian tradition has said <laughs> for 1900 years, how dare you call that position, which opposes biblical and historic orthodoxy, horrible theology? Pause. Right? So that was another cat. Did you catch the hypocrite? Are you seeing how ugly this guy is? And not just physically, he's repulsive to look at. How ugly this guy is in his dishonesty and wretchedness. You see, you see what he just said? 1900 years, biblical and historical orthodoxy, never believed open theism. Did you hear this guy? Is this not a sign of God handing him over to his vomit and humiliating him? And embarrassing him because he is of the devil and he doesn't belong to Christ. Did you hear what he just said? Is this the same guy who believes in Tulip? That Christ dies only for the elect and no one else? And that God created the elect in eternity past? And then <clears throat> those are the only ones he will regenerate, unite to Christ? And God has also predestined everyone else? whom he has sovereignly <clears throat> chosen to create, to be vessels of wrath, to be destroyed, so he can have an opportunity to damn them and manifest his glory. This guy has the audacity to tell open theists that their view is not historical and biblical because for 1,900 years, no one believed their view. This guy, a guy who can't show you even John Calvin teaching limited atonement, that Christ died only for the elect. A guy who can't show you prior to Calvin's, the Calvinists debating with Arminians, where Christians representing the true church believe that Christ only died for the elect, no more, no less. And <clears throat> with the exception of Augustine, up until the time of Augustine, even his form of predeterminism is an identical to John Calvin, Martin Luther, who didn't believe God predestined everything you do, but God gave man free will so that he's not the author of your evil or the one who determined the evil you do. You can't find that in the early histories of the church, nor can you find in the Bible apart from perverting the Bible. And this man has the audacity to condemn open theism because it's not consistent with what the church has taught historically? And is he appealing to the same church, the same fathers, the same Augustine, Augustine who believed in purgatory, Augustine who believed in water baptismal regeneration? Now, this heretic does believe in infant baptism, but he doesn't believe it regenerates, unlike Martin Luther who did. Augustine who believed in communion of saints, which he called <clears throat> pagan, because it resembles the pagan practice of praying and worshiping the Roman gods? That Augustine? Because obviously, his spiritual daddy appealed to Augustine, John Calvin, as did Martin Luther, to try to find someone in history who taught something remotely similar to their damnable heretical view of predestination. That Augustine? That's the Augustine? Athanasius, who believed water baptism or regeneration? who also believed in the community of, community of saints and the perpetual virginity of the Blessed Mother and sought her intercession. Athanasius, these are the men that you're saying are on your side, you're on their side. You see what a wicked hypocrite he is? You see why this man deserves no respect anymore? Exactly, Martin Luther did stand alone. But wait till I play Josiah Tranham who was a scholar of Reformed theology and history, a renowned 
reform minister who studied under John Gerstner, R.C. Sproul, and others, John Frame, the who's who of reformed Calvinist theology, who by the grace of God became an Orthodox, Orthodox priest. I'm going to play him. You see the hypocrite? Tell me this guy's not repulsive. Tell me this guy is not the very thing he condemns. Now, we're going to now apply his standard. He is not the seed of the woman. He is not the seed of the righteous. And he said, the Bible says, the seed of the woman, the seed of the righteous, will have enmity, hatred towards the seed of the serpent. So he's telling you that's biblical. So it's biblical for me to oppose him, condemn him, because he is of his father, the devil. He belongs to Cain, who belonged to the evil one. He's a Bible pervert, whose God is a glorified Hitler, who makes Hitler look like a choir boy, because Hitler was created by his God to do what he did. Damn, Anthony, you got buried. The true God has humiliated you and like a dog. He's handed you over to your vomit. And this is the beginning, son. This is the beginning of your humiliation. So resort to your typical Mohammedan demonic tactics like your spiritual brother, Jimmy Muhammad White. Slander people. Try to air out their dirty laundry. And I got some dirty laundry on you. And think that's going to make me back down. These guys don't know me. If airing my quote-unquote dirty laundry would have any effect, I would have stopped long ago. There's a reason why God in his mercy made me an Assyrian. We Assyrians are hard-blooded, and we don't back down until we die. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that grace, because it can be used positively or negatively. May I use it always positively. Now, let's air Orthodox Shahadas masterful snippet from Perry Robinson's very lengthy decimation of this fraud. And I'll be uploading it to my channel with their permission. The guy's hypocrisy is disgusting, isn't it? Here it is from Orthodox Shahada. There were a number of other okay, Here it goes. <laughs> Go to their channel, subscribe and like. And don't forget, January 1st, January 1st. You already have it up, brother? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Same ugly face. That's why I'm sorry. It's disgusting. Okay. Let me give you the link. We're going to have Orthodox Beast, theologically, not physically. This guy's the beast. Look at his face. Whew. It's got to be predestined you ended up getting married. Oh, but Sam, you're divorced. So what does that say? Oh, but wait, I was predestined to get divorced, right? So my ex-wife was predestined by your God to commit adultery. Your God predestined that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, how dare you? You know, you can't just flatten it out, Sam. You can't just flatten it out. You know, just you I gotta... myself am up, ignorant of it. Why don't you pause, you little loser? You're going to play him over me while I'm speaking? Was that predestined to, for you to play him over me? Exactly. By YouTube, because it's out of play. You little sinner. Okay. It was predestined. Right. But Sam, you can't flatten it out, Sam. You just got to use some flowery rhetoric and speech and, and to try to deceive people, you know, you know, immediate causes and secondary causes, Sam. Anyway, that's how they try to get around what they really believe. Now, with that said, start playing from the beginning. We're going to let this air. This is okay. From the beginning, we're airing it. It's nine minutes. Here's where he's going to bury himself further because God is going to humiliate him for, further. Watch here. Myself am ignorant of the fathers. It's from Pelagius. I'll shut up your face. It's from Pelagius. Yep. I myself am ignorant of the fathers. The fact of the matter is, uh, in fact, if I okay. can just uh, show you something for a moment, um, actually going the wrong way. Back there in that corner, that set of church fathers, which is not all that I own on the fathers, but that multi-volume set on the Church Fathers is one that I've owned for 25 years. It comes from St. Jerome. Plus. I'm sorry. That okay. He just bore witness against himself. By your words, you shall be judged, and by your words, you shall be acquitted. Pause. He just claimed he's ignorant of the Fathers, but at the same time, he's boasting, look, I got all the Fathers for 20 years. That means his sin is inexcusable. Understand how he just buried himself. His sin is inexcusable. 
because he just bore witness. I've, I have the fathers for 20 years, but he's going to parrot what his spiritual daddies, Martin Luther and John Calvin, others, falsely attributed to Jerome, because to him it's not about the honor of God, the glory of Christ, the truth of Scripture. It's about his traditions and his pride and arrogance. So let me show you what Jesus said of people like him who claim to see. In other words, they claim to know, even though they're blind. John 9, 39 to 41. Brother, can you bring it up in the Bible? John 9, 39 to 41. John 9, 39 to 41. Just bring it up for us. Okay. And then we're going to play the clip. I just want to, and I won't stop. I'll let you listen to all nine minutes of it. Okay. John 9, 39 to 41. That's why I say he's a Pharisee and is a Judaizer. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees, Anthony's spiritual forefathers, <clears throat> who were with him, heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Offensive, like meaning we're not. Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, Anthony, therefore your sin remains. This is why God is handing Anthony over to his vomit and humiliating him like the dog that he is. And why do I keep saying he, he's worshiping a false god? The triune God is the true God. But his depiction of the triune God is a butchery of what Scripture says and a blasphemy against the triune God. So it is not the correct biblical depiction of the triune God. It's a satanic perversion because he'd rather follow his spiritual daddies, the reformers, than what the Bible says and how the Bible has been interpreted by that church preserved before these perverts arose called the reformers. So his sin remains. And again, lest you think I'm harsh, I'm just doing what he said. Seed of the devil, seed of the woman, they'll have enmity and hatred towards each other. And I view him as a seed of the devil now. I try to be generous, but he's now shown his real heart. And I'm being honest, not upset. What does our Lord say to those who think they have the true God? Open up John 8 and read for us 54 and 55. In fact, do me a favor. John 8, let's read 39 to 44. John 8, 39 to 44. Okay, watch here. These are Jews who had the Old Testament who thought they were worshiping the God of the Old Testament. They answered and said to him, Abraham's our father. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Now 42, all the way to 44. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, Anthony, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. <clears throat> Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. Because he's now reached a level of reprobation that <clears throat> even when the truth smacks him, he can't see it anymore. I hope he hasn't reached that level where it's over for him. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and your view of God murders souls like Derek Webb. So talk about Hitler. Yeah, you know who Hitler is. And does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he's a liar and the father of it. Now go to 54 and 55. 54 and 55. Okay. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me of whom you say that he's your God, just like Anthony. He claims that's my God. You can claim it all you want, coppersmith. But here's what Jesus says of you and your spiritual ancestors. Yet you have not known him. But I know him. If I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. You see? So you fangirls that worship at Anthony's feet, remember what he said. Seed of the devil, 
seed of the woman, hatred towards each other. And he's no seed of the woman as far as I'm concerned. He is of the devil, especially when he slanders all these millions of Catholics, Orthodox, Coptic, and Assyrian Church of the East. And likens them to Hitler, which is actually the God he worships, a glorified Hitler, who is a Hitler on an infinitely higher scale because his God, like Hitler, creates people and then determines they sin and then determines to gas them in fire forever for a sin that he determined that they commit and couldn't choose otherwise, making Hitler look innocent. Okay, now I'll go back and play it. I won't have to say anything else. Now let's play. I won't say anything. I'm going to let Perry Robinson school the fake, the fraud, when you bring it up. Keep playing. This is not available online. This is, uh, as far as I know, still untranslated from the Latin. So right. I did you hear with the Latin translation uh, uh, of Jerome. But he says, for being ignorant of the justice of God, that is righteousness of God, and seeking to establish their own, the Jews, they have not submitted themselves to the justice of God, not knowing that God justifies by faith alone, sola fide, in the Latin, literally, sola fide, and thinking that they are just by the works of the law, which they did not observe, they would not submit themselves to the remission of sins, lest they should appear to have been sinners. So they wouldn't admit that they were sinners so that they might be justified by faith alone. They wouldn't submit themselves to that, and for that reason sought to be justified by their works, works of the law, which they did not even observe. But again, St. Jerome refers to it as being justified. This is a text, I believe, that Mr. Pause, pause. uses. And I gave yeah, it real Pause. Do you see how animated he get? This is what led to his humiliation and downfall, where he got so livid and pissed. And this is what God used to expose his filthy, wicked heart. When William nailed him on it, saying this is a fraudulent quote, Jerome never said it, he got livid. Then our brother Perry came from an Orthodox perspective and further confirmed William was right and then showed that this actually comes from Pelagius, someone that Augustine condemned as a heretic, which Calvinists use as a boogeyman. Oh, you're a Pelagianist. Oh, you're a semi-Pelagian. And yet the fraud quoted Pelagius which means Pelagius taught his false gospel. Isn't that ironic? It wasn't Jerome, but Pelagius who taught your view of sola fide. But I thought Pelagius is a heretic. So Anthony, you see how God just made you stupid again. He hand you over to your vomit and gave you a spirit of stupor. He just made you look stupid because you are now agreeing with Pelagius it's Pelagius, your daddy, that got soli fide, not Jerome, you fake. See, keep barking, Anthony, and God is going to muzzle you at the hands of his servants. And I pray I am a servant of the Holy Spirit, unlike you. Now keep playing it. I won't stop. Citation there from Patrologia Latini. That's what the PL refers to, as opposed to Patrologia Graeci. Jerome, Mr. Rogers cites, for being ignorant of the justice of God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted themselves to the justice of God, not knowing that God justifies by, oh, there's that phrase again, faith alone, and thinking that they are just by the works of the law, which they did not observe. They would not submit to themselves, not submit themselves to the remission of sins, lest they should appear to have been sinners. Now, again, we have this faith alone here phrase. It could mean sola fide, but there's nothing here per se. It's just a difference between people who are ignorant of justice of God. They tried to establish their own, that is to be the source of their own justice. They didn't submit to God's justice, all right? That's just plain good old anti-Pelagian talk, all right? So if you look at your sola fide checklist, I think you'll see that there's nothing here that expresses sola fide. It says, thinking they are, that they are just by works of the law. Well, Jerome could, like Ambrosiaster, whom he knew, they were actually kind of enemies, um, could mean works the law ceremonial. Or he could mean works the law apart from grace. Those are also <laughs> possibilities. Um, 
There's nothing in the text here that expresses sola fide. So we have a problem though, because um, this text is actually not from Jerome. It floats around on the internet and it's not from Jerome. Um, I will tell you who it's from. It's from Pelagius. Ouch! It's actually a quote from Pelagius. It's not from Jerome. So again, we have another case of Jerome, of uh, Pelagius, teaching justification by faith alone. All right? Um, now, why is this significant? Well, first, and this is a little bit of history to explain. So in the Ancient Christian Commentary on Scripture in Volume 6, and I put a question mark by page 13 because this was an electronic version that I had um, via electronic reader, and it didn't have um, pagination for, for this section. So I guesstimated. So you have to do a little control F to find it. But he says, similar to this work and evidently dependent on it, um, is the commentary written by arch heretic Pelagius, which has survived because for many centuries it was thought to have been the work of Jerome. It is important because it allows Pelagius to speak for himself on subjects that were to land him in controversy with Augustine, like excommunication, and eventually lead to his condemnation. What we find is a man of moderate and even mainstream views, though it has to be remembered that the text as we now have it was reworked in the sixth century. By, by both Pramasius and Cassidorus. Pelagius' original text was in specific ways presumed, presumably explicitly heretical. But what we have now is unexceptional, even if it is still possible to detect points of disagreement with Augustine. Now, yeah, I wanna go back here. So this is a pseudo-Jeromean text, and there's a number of them. A number of Pelagius' commentaries get grouped and classified in the sixth century and further under the name of Jerome. And this causes no small amount of confusion. Why was the text reworked? Because figures saw, thought that this was from Jerome and thought Jerome can't, we can't let Jerome teach Pelagianism. He can't possibly be teaching that. So we're gonna put in his real meaning. So then they altered the text, okay? Q the year 1516, which might be significant for Protestants because it's getting close to that 1517 year. This work of pseudo Jerome was published under Jerome's name in Europe. And the reformers started to make use of it. Well, why did they make use of it? Because as you saw, it says God justifies by faith alone. So you have Luther and Melanchthon who are using this text from Pelagius to argue that it teaches justification by, that Jerome taught justification by faith alone. Now, what do we have with Mr. Rogers? <laughs> we have the same exact thing happening because Mr. Rogers apparently did not read this book or really any of the academic literature about Pelagius and the history of commentary, Latin commentaries on Paul's epistle to the Romans. Because if you read any of that literature, pseudo Jerome comes up and comes up in a fair amount of sources. Uh, I have a number of books, Suter's book, uh, comes up in the Ambrosiaster commentary, comes up in lots of different places. Um, so why is this important? The history is interesting, but for us it's important because, remember I said the, the name of the program is Shapes in the Clouds, seeing patterns that just aren't there. Well, Mr. Rogers took this text and because he thought it was from Jerome, he read into the patristic text something that was not there according to the original intent of the author. Because whatever Pelagius believed, he did not believe the Protestant doctrine of justification by faith alone. And so Mr. Rogers, I think this is important to take a step back and be much more careful uh, and provide some kind of analysis for the text that you're looking at for your readers and for yourself. Because, and, and I, here I'm not trying to do a one-upman thing, seriously, because everybody makes mistakes. 
I make mistakes. You've seen some of my spelling mistakes. Okay. I've made mistakes. So I, I'm not trying to cow you or humiliate you, but I see these texts float around from Jerome and others that are falsified on the internet. And it appears, unless you went to Petro, uh, Petrologia Latini yourself and got this text, which is possible. I don't know if you can read Latin or not, but that's possible. Um, maybe you did, but I think it's more likely it just got ripped off the internet and got floated around and you saw it and you read it according to your presuppositions. You interpreted the data according to your presuppositions rather than providing an analysis of the text. Okay. So, um, this is part of the problem. And I think all the preceding material shows very clearly that you're actually reading into the text, things that aren't exhibited, conceptual markers for sola fide aren't exhibited in the text. Now, you, again, you may have other, Mr. Rogers may have other um, texts that he can demonstrate from the fathers that teach sola fide, but none of these have. And Jerome, quote unquote, Jerome, Pelagius certainly doesn't. Okay, you got it there. <clears throat> now, it's obvious, no, he is not recanted. And I agree, at that time, like Perry, I was giving Anthony Rogers the benefit of the doubt. And I even said, go back, listen, I go, <clears throat> I know the man. He's a man of integrity, and he loves the Lord Jesus enough, and he's going to swallow his pride and apologize because we all make mistakes. But he actually proved me wrong. He even shocked me. His true colors came to the forefront. His true colors came to the forefront. He's not interested in admitting he's wrong and humble himself. He's now wanting to do everything he can to save face. So he's now slandering people, which is fine. I'm a big boy because I'm going to humiliate him. But the more he barks, the more opportunity he's going to give the Christians to muzzle him by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is nothing. William Albrecht has another video that's going to come out that I'm going to upload where he cites the Council of Chalcedon on their view of the hypostatic union, the two natures of Christ, but ignores the fact that those at Chalcedon believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary and in her intercession which he likened to praying to Roman gods because he's a fake. He's shown himself not to be a brother. So let's put things in perspective. Lest I get slandered and people lie. Why am I doing this? Because Anthony left us no choice. Am I being petty? Well, you may think so, but I'm simply answering a fool according to his folly. I'm simply <clears throat> muzzling a dog who's barking against the true God who's perverting his word and slandering the church of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I didn't start this war. Vocab did. And the coward, Vocab, the slob, took clips trying to attack my character because I mock people as if I was embarrassed. Because if I thought that was going to embarrass me, I wouldn't mock them, would I? Because that's all he can do. See, the problem is I've noticed a tendency among some of these guys. They think because they're authorities in certain areas that now qualifies them to speak on other areas where they're ignoramuses. For example, Volcap thinks because he's a gift from God to refute the black Hebrew Israelites and people keep you know, pumping, up, pumping him up, that now he has the expertise to go after the Orthodox Church. And he got cut down a size and humiliated. He didn't like it. So he took it out on me. Because I knew what Volcap was doing and didn't appreciate it. So I had Jay Dyer, Father Deacon, put him in his place. Anthony, also because he thinks he's knowledgeable in defending the Trinity and refuting anti-Trinitarians, that somehow that now qualifies him to be an expert in the fathers. And so he thought he was doing Volcap, his fellow brother in Doctrines of Satan, Tulip, a favor when he... <clears throat> quote, mind the fathers, perverting them to teach sola fide. So when William said, I'm going to have to address his distortion of the fathers, he got upset. So he came up with a follow-up video and made it worse for himself because then the follow-up response, 
humiliate him even further. And then Perry Robinson decided, I need to give an answer from the Orthodox perspective. He got further decimated and his pride got the better of him and his venomous heart, his filthy heart was exposed by the true God, what he really thinks of the apostolic churches. I didn't start this. Don't blame me. I'm not upset. I'm not. Why? Because as long as the Holy Spirit confirms to me that he's guiding me, as long as I yield to the Holy Spirit, I don't give a damn what people say about me. As long as I don't dishonor Jesus, shame Jesus, and the Spirit enables me to love Jesus the way he deserves to be loved and live for the Lord and preach with integrity and not tickle ears, <clears throat> that's all that matters at the end of the day. Whether my numbers increase or decrease, doesn't matter. But coming back to the issue, here's what I want you guys not to do. If you want me to advance and progress, because Lord willing, if God gives me health in the upcoming year, doesn't need me, wants me to stick around, do ministry. And you want me now to go into thorough exegesis of Romans 9, destroying the satanic butchering of Romans 9 by Calvinists like Anthony Coppersmith. And if you want me now to discuss what the Bible teaches about saving faith, what true saving faith is, because finally, by the grace of God's spirit, I get it. By his power, the wicked Calvinist Lutheran lenses have been destroyed that blinded me. And now I believe the Holy Spirit has illuminated me like he's illuminated thousands of others, which is why they've left the Protestant view of sola fide for the biblical view of what saving, justifying faith is, in agreement with that church that Jesus established and preserved and empowered to know the scriptures, to preserve the scriptures, to defend the scriptures and die for those scriptures, then here's how you're going to help me. Stop deterring me, distracting me with your comments. Anthony said this. Anthony did that. Volkup said this. Volkup said that. Mrs. Austin Powers, queer bait, effeminate queer. Anthony's girlfriend is doing, stop. I don't care. I told you once I'm done uploading all my arguments, maybe it's going to take me a month, two months, a year, by the grace of the Lord, I'm going to call out these cowards for public debates. So stop distracting me because today I wanted to do the Marian doctrines. But because you guys don't control yourselves, you got to keep reminding me, thinking you're doing the Lord a favor and me a favor. You're only hindering me, which is what these demons want. Can you stop? Can you stop telling me what Anthony's doing? Because Anthony's exposing himself. He's humiliating himself. Vocab has exposed himself. He's a wicked, raby dog. Austin Powers, that effeminate queer, he's now using my name. And William's name, because he saw it, he's getting more numbers. They want to get more numbers. And they realize if they put my name in their channel, their numbers go up. Stop feeding into it. Stop being their agents. I know you don't mean to do that. You mean well. Okay. You get my point? So from this day, don't tell me. Just pray for me. Pray God's spirit will can. can <clears throat> Seal me and conserve me and empower me and purify me and, and cleanse me and wash me in the blood of the Lamb, Lord Jesus. Protect me from Satan and his dogs. Do not allow me to shame Jesus, dishonor Jesus, blaspheme Jesus, or fall into any scandal like others have. To give me the health I need, my daughters the health they need, and grant them holiness and salvation unto life and bring them to me. And the Lord Jesus provides for me to provide for them. Let me do what I need to do. Stop telling me. You're not helping me and you're not doing the Lord a favor. You're not of Sam. You're not of Anthony. You're not of David Wood. Don't defend me in their comment section. Don't attack those who attack me. Be zealous for the glory of the triumph God. Only condemn and attack these blasphemers when they pervert the gospel and attack the church. But right now, you see where Anthony stands. Here's what he thinks of you, Orthodox. Here's what he thinks of you, Catholic. He's exposed his heart. The Lord has humiliated this dog. 
Like a dog, he's handing them over to his vomit, and it's going to get worse. I promise you. Watch what the true God, the living God, is going to do to Anthony, like he did to Jimmy Muhammad White and J.D. Hall. Anthony will disappear in time by the grace of Jesus Christ to teach him a lesson. Just like the Lord doesn't need me, he doesn't need this arrogant <clears throat> seed of the serpent. Okay, Anthony, Anthony, you'll see what's going to happen to him. May God have mercy. I'm not wishing it on him. May the Lord have mercy on all of us because I don't want the Lord to give me what I deserve. But he's now likened you, Catholics, Orthodox, Coptic, Syrian Church, to Nazis. He has likened you to Israelite Baal worshipers. He has likened you to pagans and their worship of the Roman gods. That's what he's likened you to. So he's telling you, you Catholics, you Orthodox, you Coptic, you Assyrian Church of the East, you are at the seed of the serpent. You're not my brothers and sisters. I'm at enmity with you. <clears throat> you preach a false gospel, and you are perverts. That's what he just said. Now, since I don't believe in his God who doesn't exist, I believe in the true God who is patient and wants everyone to truly repent as the Holy Spirit convicts, there's hope for this filthy dog to repent. And if he repents and apologize, we'll all forgive him and embrace him. Because we don't believe in his glorified Hitler, whom he calls God, who's already predestined people to rape children, murder people, and then damn them to hell and gas them forever. He's the one who worships a glorified Hitler. We worship the true God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So leave me be. Let me start the series. Let me finish my series on the Lord's Prayer, Messianic Prophecy Series, the Nicene Creed, and let me now prepare myself for new series, Romans 9, fully explained, destroying the satanic perversion, Romans 9, by these demons, these hyper-Calvinists. And by the way, for the record, not all Calvinists are like him. Not all Calvinists hate the Catholic Church or Orthodox Church. Not all Calvinists are evil. He is evil. Jimmy Muhammad White is evil. <clears throat> Hamenaeus Malone is evil. These are dogs. They're not your brothers. Don't support them. Be done with them. They don't love you. They don't see you as brothers and sisters. Vocab on a channel, Black Hebrew Israelite channel, debating Black Hebrew Israelites, mocked the Catholic Church saying, well, I don't pray to dead people. But he's not just condemning Catholics. That means you Orthodox, you pray to dead people. See the pervert? They're not your friends. They're not your brothers. All this time, they wanted your support. They wanted you to subscribe. They wanted you to watch their videos and make them go viral. And yet in their hearts, they thought of you as Judaizers, as Israelite Baal worshipers, as pagans who worship gods and goddesses, as false brethren, as the seed of the serpent. That's what they thought of you. That's what they thought of you. Okay, when he makes a video trying to depict me as Hitler, which is his God, by the way, a glorified Hitler, what is he saying? That I am murdering people because I'm preaching a false gospel and I'm committing a worse atrocity than Hitler. Hitler murdered people physically. Supposedly, if you follow me, I'm murdering you for all eternity. But wait, I don't believe anything different than what the church fathers believe what the gospel was. What the Catholics believe the gospel is, what the Orthodox believe, the, that means all of you are Nazis. Are you reading between the lines, brethren? Are you going to still subscribe to these demons? Like I told you, I'm going to lose a lot of Protestants, but it was meant to be. It was inevitable. But pray that every Protestant I lose... There'll be a Protestant who's open and sincere who will subscribe and join. And that more Orthodox and more Catholics and Coptic, and it's not, I'm not doing it for numbers, but pray God will replace these seed of the serpent with true seed of the woman, the seed of the righteous. And I want to praise God for some Protestants. Let me read some testimonies. I won't mention names. I won't mention names. Then we're going to go to Father Josiah Trenham. I love this man. Okay. I'm not going to mention names. Here you go. I just got this today. 
Can I read this to you? Watch here. So this dog is helping us, is helping us to advance the true gospel in the kingdom of Christ with his rabid barking. Here. It's what I got today. Hey, brother, I'm really bothered by the video Anthony uploaded about you 11 hours ago. Portraying you as a Nazi who does not want people to follow Jesus and rather want them to follow you. You see? He thinks he's, he's winning. God is handing this dog over to his vomit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. May we love you and worship you even at the death. Watch. I'm really disgusted by it. I'm really disgusted by it. <clears throat> I just want to say to you that I love you as a brother. I follow you for a year now, and God has used you to help me understand his word better and have come to know him better. As far as I can tell, you are very honest <clears throat> and transparent, and I've never seen you glorify yourself on your message. You always give glory to the trying God, which he mocked. Remember? Mocking the cross like his father the devil does, like demons his brothers do. They mock the cross and they fear it. So he's exposing himself daily, right? <clears throat> of course, we all struggle with sins, including Anthony. That's why we need our Lord and Savior. Thanks to you and many others like Josiah Trenham. Josiah Trenham, we're going to now look into. William Albrecht, etc. I'm on a journey. Rejoice, my brothers, to fall in love more and more with the apostolic churches. Glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. That I had learned to see as bad and not really the body of Christ. Coming from an evangelical background. I must say that I've learned a lot from Anthony also concerning the Trinity, especially in the Old Testament. But his behavior is in no sense Christ-like as he likes to say. And again, I'm very disgusted by it. See, these dogs are being used of the Lord. To bring people to the truth. So keep barking, Anthony Coppersmith, as the Lord keeps handing over to your vomit and strengthens us and brings us to the fullness of the truth. Now, this comes from a brother who's very near and dear to my heart. Can't mention his name. He reached out to me last night, and I encouraged him. Watch what he says. He, too, diehard Calvinist. Diehard Calvinist. Guys, re read and rejoice with me. Brother, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Brother, I'm struggling because I've watched your sessions and so much of what you are saying makes sense. But I fear that so many people call me a heretic if I say the things you are. The stuff you are presenting, though, is irrefutable. Glory, glory, glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory to the triune God. They're waking up. Like I woke up by the Spirit. He sees a Calvinist. And thanks to Anthony and his barking, the arguments are irrefutable. There's no way to refute them. But he's still afraid, but God will give him the power to overcome his fear. Because he knows his Protestant background, they're going to call him a heretic, just like they're doing me. But let's count the cost. Is Jesus worthy? If they attack us, slander us, <clears throat> try to discredit us, Humiliate us. As long as we know it's the truth and we lead to the Spirit, carry your cross and follow Jesus. <laughs> Glory to the trying God. Now let's talk about this wonderful man who is a nightmare and a thorn in Anthony's side. Father Josiah Trenham, the links are in the description box. Brother, open up these pages. Okay, I'm going to give them to you. We're almost done. <laughs> Almost done. Open this up, brother, and I'll tell you which one we're going to read so they can see. Father Josiah Trenham. The links are in the description box. I'm going to play just one of his videos. We got several of his videos. He's an amazing man of God. Show his picture. In the shadow of John Chrysostom. There's that man right there. This is his testimony. Born and raised in Pasadena. But I'm going to get... The shorter version of his testimony. Hold on. Let me get there. So these guys are going to slander us, just like Jimmy Muhammad White did and J.D. Hall did with the Caners. Okay? Here's the one I want you to show. We're going to read this. Okay, this is short and to the point. 
It's all in the description box, guys. I don't need to share it with you. Open this one, brother, and we're going to go, and then I'm going to tell you what clip to play. Thank you. You've been blessing me, Adam, and I praise God for you. Thank you, brother. You're going to bless him. Okay. Can you enlarge a little bit or no? <coughs> okay. Now, let's read his training. Journey to Orthodoxy. Just uploaded a very interesting interview with Father Josiah Trenham. I love this guy. Hey, watch here. Who grew up in the Reformed tradition and later converted Orthodoxy. Now, notice his credentials. And by the way, tell Anthony, send me the degree, his whatever it is that he got from the Presbyterian Seminary, because I'm running out of toilet paper, and I want to take that degree with the Quran and use it to wipe my arse with, because his degree is no better than the Quran and no better than toilet paper. This tells you, you can have all those books, like this seed of the serpent does. You see all those books? And those books still not benefit you, but lead to your destruction. So all that learning, and he's still an idiot. He's still a liar and a deceiver and a tool of the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving us from pride and arrogance. May you destroy our flesh and our pride, and let the Spirit be our teacher. Now, Father Josiah, here's why the Calvinists can't stand him. Oh! By the way, Revelation 12.10, I hope the Shia stop molesting your mother and raping her in the name of Allah and doing muta with that whore. Okay, Revelation 12.10. I understand you're upset that the Shia raped, molested your mother in the name of Allah, calling it muta, Revelation 12.10. By the way, I would like to give you an advice. Yes. The paper of the degree is usually very hard. You will have, you will get hurt, so don't you. Are you sure about that? Yeah, my the degree that I have is the paper is pretty. What hard, if I so. wet it a bit? If I wet it, would it be okay? Uh, I don't think so. It's usually uh, pretty good and uh, has some film on it so that you won't. Okay, then all right, I won't wipe my arse with it, but I'll take uh, Anthony's degree. And when I go out walking, because I like to do some cardio, I'll put it on the floor and I'll piss on it so that you know I can use it for urine, so I can piss on it. What do you think? That. Could work, but yeah, try to keep it away from your backside. Okay. It, it might right. hurt. Okay, thank you, sir. Even if I do squats and tighten up my glutes, it'll still hurt? No, your English is uh, five feet above my head. Okay, brother. Okay, yeah, well, squats is the bar. You put, you know, like bodybuilders do for legs. Ah, okay. And then the glutes means your ass muscles, your arse muscles. <laughs> okay, TMI. <laughs> okay, too much. Okay, let's go. Let's, all right, let's read his testimony. Father Josiah grew up in the Presbyterian tradition and claims one of the Mayflower Puritans as an ancestor. <clears throat> he did his undergraduate studies at Westmont College in Santa Barbara, California. Watch his testimony, how amazing this man is. His senior thesis was on Jonathan Edwards. Ouch. From there, he went to Reform Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, and Orlando, Florida where he studied under Reformed theologians like R.C. Sproul, John Gerstner, and John Frame. He received his MDiv from Westminster Theological Seminary in Escondido, California. Ouch! D these are the creme de la creme of Reformed scholarship and seminaries. Even Robert Genis went to Westminster Theological Seminary, and he's now a Catholic beast. He's a spiritual beast, whereas Anthony looks like a physical beast. He's proof that Bigfoot still, still lives because he's got descendants. He then went on to do doctoral studies at University of Durham, England, where he received his PhD. Now, to make it worse, to dig, stick the knife in Anthony a little worse, while in seminary, Father Josiah was licensed as a minister by the Presbyterian Church in America. Like Anthony, he's a Presbyterian minister, or was, like Anthony. So Anthony's a Presbyterian minister. In 1993, he was received into the Orthodox Church and ordained into the priesthood by his grace, Bishop Basil, a man of outstanding reform theological training. Knows Calvinism inside and out. Knows the reformers inside and out. Will make Anthony look like a schoolgirl, like a kindergarten girl when it comes to this information. And he became Orthodox. I wonder why. Oh, wait. Anthony's glorified Hitler, whom he thinks is God of the Bible. May God 
save people from that blasphemy. The triune God who lives of the Bible is not Antony's Calvinist God, who's more like Allah. Antony's glorified Hitler predestined him to become Orthodox. He was already chosen from before the foundation of the world to become Orthodox. Ouch, Anthony. So your God predestined him to be an Orthodox. Sucks being you. Don't complain. Orthodox Church and ordained into the priesthood by his grace, Bishop Basil, Bishop of Wichita, and Mid-America of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese. He currently pastors at St. Andrew Orthodox Church in Riverside, California. Now, let's just play this clip. We'll be done. <clears throat> He talks about sola fide in the reformers. Let me see which one it is. Let me find it. Hold on. Okay, not this one. It's the second one. Hold on, guys. And then we'll be done. This is it. Here it is. Short clip. Sola scriptura. No, no, I was the right one. I had the wrong one. Sorry, about guys. I had the right one. Oh, I'm so stupid. Here it is. Come on, man. Why like this, man? Why you make mistakes so much, man? I don't know, man. Why you making mistakes, man? Why like this? <sighs> oh, or here you go. That's not it, man. What happened, man? I lose it, man. Hey, man. No good, no good. This very problem, man. Why like this problem? Okay, here it goes. Faith alone. Here it is, brother. Why you make so much problem for me, man? I like this, man. Why like this? Okay, here you go, brother. And we're going to wrap it up. Play this. Listen. And he's got an excellent book that I'm reading through. Hopefully I'll finish it by the grace of God. Watch here. We're going to just play what he says. Can you uh, put up the volume, sir? We hear nothing, man. You know, the doctrine of justification by faith alone is taught by Martin Luther and refined by Philip Melanchthon and adopted by all the subsequent reformers is considered by most that I've read. You're, you're more knowledgeable than I, so correct me if I'm wrong. You know, the linchpin theology of the Reformation. St. John Chrysostom, the most influential commentator of the Pauline epistles in the patristic era, wrote extensively about justification long before Luther and Melanchthon, and you have a PhD in work on uh, St. John Chrysostom. So could you briefly describe what justification by faith alone means and how does patristic teaching on justification differ from that of the reformers and Protestants? Mm. Listen. This could be a show of its own. But, it should be. <laughs> but nonetheless. <laughs> Sola fide is one of the great Reformation slogans. Uh, and in fact, this dogma of the Protestant faith articulated by Martin Luther from his own experience, really from his own inner angst, uh, has become the hallmark. Although I should say at the outset that there is controversy uh, amongst the Protestants themselves about exactly what this is, very much like there were different opinions of what sola scriptura is. So, for instance, Martin Luther uh, had a concept, what he called the glorious exchange, which lies behind his concept of justification by faith alone, that made his colleague uh, and his great friend, Philip Mellington, very nervous. Pause. So nervous, in fact, that um, Mellington refused see? to put the word. I'll bust you up, man. I said, pause. You're going to have to run a little bit. Not right now. Are you hearing what Anthony will not share? Even the reformers could not agree on the definition of sola fide. The very reformers argued what sola fide meant. You, you understand why you need to listen to this man and read his book? You get the impression by Anthony Coppersmith that the reformers were all agreed about what sola scriptura meant and sola fide meant. No, they debated. They argued, they differed, and fought one another uh, regarding what does sola fide actually mean? What do you mean by sola scriptura? His own spiritual daddies did not agree and opposed one another. He's now going to mention Melanchthon opposing Luther for adding the word alone. Just rewind that for a clip a little few seconds earlier and play it again so they can hear. In fact, that... Um... 
Melanchthon refused to put the word alone in the Augsburg Confession. In its paragraph about justification by faith, hmm. Luther wanted the word alone in there. Hmm. Luther had imposed the word into his German translation of the yes. Bible, which did not exist, yes. which was just the original uh, spring from a fountain of mistranslations that continue to this day in the Protestant movement. Uh, and we could even go back beyond uh, Martin Luther. We could go back to John Wycliffe, for instance, and then later, later uh, into William Tyndale, who made very conscientious uh, mistranslations of the New Testament in order to further Protestant ideology. And this is going on today, for instance, with the New International Version, which is I a, a very much not a translation, a very much an interpretation in order mm. to promote evangelicalism. Um, if listeners want to know more about that, there are footnotes in my book documenting this reality. So even between Luther and his close friend Melanchthon, there was tension about justification by faith alone. Mm. Melanchthon did not want the word alone in there. And that is something that the Orthodox support because the word alone does not exist uh, in the New Testament. It exists only as the consequence of Martin Luther's specific concept of justification. I would also say that Luther was so uncomfortable with uh, any other concepts of justification that he wanted to remove the epistle of James from the New Testament. In fact, he yeah. called the epistle of James an epistle of straw which well, scandalized many other of his followers. Did you hear that? Martin Luther wanted to throw out the epistle of James initially, calling it epistle of straw, because he saw the problem it posed for his sola fide, justified by faith alone. And that scandalized other reformers. These are the spiritual daddies of coppersmith, the seed of the serpent. Finish it, brother. Go ahead. Followers, including Melanchthon, and Melanchthon convinced him to drop this. Let's not revise the canon mm. of the New Testament, please. And of course, the reason he wanted to do that is that St. James is so explicit in chapter two that justification is not by faith alone. In fact, that's a quote. Abraham was not justified by faith alone. <laughs> this is John. James chapter 2. And he goes further and says that he was justified by his works. So an Orthodox would simply say that if any Christian tradition forms a dogma of justification that is un, that, that makes it so uncomfortable with the actual words of the apostles themselves, so uncomfortable that they want to eradicate them, something is wrong. Hmm. Something is wrong. We believe in justification by faith, but we do not believe in justification by faith alone. We believe in justification of faith working in St. Paul's language through love, Amen. which is the emphasis of St. James. St. James says justification by faith alone is a mental game, that even Satan has possession of this mental proposition. Satan knows that God is one, but that is not a faith that he leans on. He, he isn't a person trusting in God and letting fruits come from that union. In fact, it's a it's a dogma that Satan hates. Hmm. Pause right there. Father, in Protestantism. It's a dogma that Satan hates. What a wonderful, amazing, spiritual man. Like Anthony was a Calvinist, a Presbyterian minister who knows Calvinism inside and out, who studied with R.C. Sproul, John Gerstner, John Frame, people that Anthony would drool to study under, and he left it because he saw Calvinism was a satanic perversion of the Bible. Glory to the triune God. And he said, the real faith that saves is faith working through love, according to Paul himself, Galatians 5, 6. And anyone who's uncomfortable with the wording of Scripture would remove it. You know there's a problem with that. And this true doctrine of justification that is faith working through love, a faith that works, faithfulness that works, Satan hates. So he erected people like Anthony Coppersmith to teach a counterfeit gospel. And he has the audacity to condemn us. So Lord willing, let's wrap up with the following. I'm going to have him bring up some verses. But before we do, please do not be of Shamoon or of Rogers or of David. Don't defend me on their channels. Don't attack them for attacking me. That's number one. You owe me nothing. 
but your prayers and love, support, not going on a channel, fighting for me, or attacking them for condemning me, showing you're a Shemunian, God forbid, you're not my disciples. We're all disciples of the Holy Spirit. Don't be like their fanboys. May they repent and fear God. Be zealous for the glory of Jesus, the honor of the church, and the integrity of the gospel. Attack them when they attack the true gospel or the church or present a Jesus that makes them look like Allah of Islam. Be zealous for that, not for me. I don't need you to defend me. Don't. It's number one. Number two, do you want me to progress and advance in these sessions? This is now the second time I wasn't able to do justice to the Marian doctrines. Then please don't be messenger boys or girls of these heretics, these tools of the devil who think they're Christian, who think they're honoring God and God is pleased with them and they're doing, they're doing God a favor. Don't be their messenger boys and girls and tell me what they're saying. Stop. Because then I'm going to take it as you're being used of the devil to distract me. Stop. Stop telling me what Anthony Coppersmith is saying or his girlfriend, Austin Powers. I don't need to know because I'm going to chip away, destroy their blasphemies, their lies, and muzzle them by the power of Jesus Christ by presenting the scriptures clearly, accurately, and bringing on real scholars who know church history and present history accurately by the grace of the triune God. So don't report back to me. Yes, and that's ironic. One of the arguments that Alexander Rogers was using, how the, the popes killed some of the reformers, but this wicked tool of the devil forgets the magisterial reformers murdered heretics like the Anabaptists whom they drowned because they believed in believer's baptism, which means if Jimmy Muhammad White was living at the time of the reformers, he would have been killed. Or John Calvin's Geneva burning Miguel Servetus alive because he was a Unitarian heretic. So this wicked, deceitful tool of the devil, Anthony Rogers, condemns the church for murdering Protestants and others, but doesn't condemn the magisterial reformers for murdering heretics and doesn't condemn the reformers for trying to help the Turks to destroy the Roman Catholic Church. You see what a wicked dog he is? And it's only a matter of time God was to expose him. Like a dog, God has handed him over to his vomit. Praise be the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. May the Lord save us from this wrath and discipline that he's unleashing on these dogs. May we not be like them. May he preserve us in love with Jesus perfectly and not give us what we deserve. And may the Lord, in his mercy, grant them repentance. It's not too late for them. Now, with that said, with that said, pray for my daughters and I. Pray for Adam. Pray for all of us in ministry. Pray the Lord will restore my health. My throat gets healthier. My lungs get healthier. Pray the Lord gives me supernatural discipline to stay healthy, keep the weight off. Pray the Lord empowers all of us to truly love Jesus, worship Jesus, obey his word, fast, pray, sing, and faith, working through love, deeds of love, showing the Lord we love him. Pray we never whore ourselves for numbers or for fame or fortune. Pray we remain united in the love of Jesus without compromise till the end. Pray the Lord will bless the ministry, help the numbers grow. Pray the support continues to come in. If the Lord wants me to do ministry, pray God will protect my daughters, bless them and love them and bring them to me. May they outlive me in Jesus' name. And in the upcoming year, if the Lord wills, I'm going to do a multi-part series on Romans 9. And I promise you will be blown away. I'm going to do a multi-part series on what true saving faith is, destroying Anthony's satanic doctrine, his perversion of what justification by faith is. I promise you, by the power of the Holy Spirit and other things, but be patient. Be patient because there's only so many hours in a day. But if you keep being their messenger boys and girls, then you're going to delay this. Let me bring out all the material. And then Lord willing, when I'm done, I'm going to go after these dogs and muzzle them in public debates if they're men enough to debate. So Lord willing, let me now end it. Why do I call this snake, this seed of the devil, 
who exposed himself for what he is, coppersmith. <clears throat> Number one, you can profess to love the triune God and still be of the devil, a false Christian seed of the serpent, by preaching a false gospel. How do I know? The book of Galatians. There, the Judaizers, the Jews who are demanding Gentiles live like Jews, they worship the same God that Paul did. They loved and worshiped the same Jesus that Paul did. They differed only on the gospel, and Paul said that's good enough to condemn them as false brothers. So it doesn't matter how many anti-Trinitarians Anthony Rogers debates. Though he professes to worship the triune God, his gospel is a false gospel, and his depiction of the sovereignty of the triune God is a blasphemy against God because it makes God a glorified Hitler and makes him identical to Allah of Sunni Islam, which is blasphemy. He is not your brother. He's your enemy. So why do I call him coppersmith? Brother, open up BibleGateway.com, <clears throat> whatever Bible you use, so we can go through this and we're done. Okay. And we're going to be done. Oh, sorry, brother. Hold on. Okay, now. I'm going to show you how to do it. Use New King James Version because Elizabethan English will be hard for some people. Okay. Okay, now put in 1 Timothy 1, 18 to 20. Yes, I'm going to tell you how to do this. Then semicolon, space, then 2 Timothy 4, 14 to 18, okay? Guys, do pray. The Lord keep providing because when my lease is up, we're going to have to renew the lease and pay more money because of inflation. Pray we don't panic and the support comes in and the Lord provides for his glory. Now watch. That's it. That's all you need. I don't know what you're doing. Play it. Bring it up. You don't need a semicolon. All right. Now let's read it. Okay. This charge I commit to you. This charge I commit to you, <clears throat> Timothy, my son, or son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. See, notice, it's warfare, folks. We're in spiritual warfare. We must destroy and slay blasphemers spiritually, not physically. We're not jihadis who kill with physical swords and behead people. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected concerning faith, have sh suffered shipwreck, like Anthony Coppersmith, who's trying to shipwreck the apostolic faith and deceive you into his tulip, which is a doctrine of the, de of the devil. Of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Anthony, Alexander, Coppersmith, Rogers, and Vocab, Hymenaeus Malone. Tulip is from the pit of hell. It is a blasphemy against God, and you are the seed of the devil. And may the Lord Jesus use us like he did Paul. May we be like Paul in loving Jesus more than reputation and silence you and hand you over to the devil for punishment so that you may repent. If not, you get what you deserve. Now go to the second passage. 2 Timothy 4, 14 to 18. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 4, 14, 18. Watch here. This is what Anthony, the spiritual son of Alexander, wants to do. Anthony, the spiritual son of Alexander, and Hymenaeus Malone want to do. And I'm not saying I'm Paul, so I don't want these perverts to twist my words. May God shame you. I am not good enough to carry Paul's sandals. But Paul does say, imitate him as he imitates Christ. So I pray we all imitate Paul and be filled with the spirit like Paul was filled. But if you're going to imitate Paul, then you're going to have Alexander Coppersmiths opposing you. And I pray I can walk like Paul in loving Jesus so that one of the signs that you know you're walking like Paul and imitating Paul and imitating Jesus, you're going to have false Christians and perverts like Anthony attacking you as a sign the Lord is making you like Paul, who was made like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So here is Anthony's spiritual father. They're trying to now slander me, but it's only going to shame them. 
Alexander the Coppersmith. Anthony Rogers did me much harm. And not really. May the Lord repay him according to his works, which he's doing. Because of this wicked, blasphemous dog, now the Orthodox are rising. Now the Catholics are rising. Now the Assyrian Church. They're now all arising to defend the honor of the apostolic churches and the integrity of the correct interpretation of Scripture. And saving God from this wicked, blasphemous depiction that makes God similar to Hitler on an infinite level and to Allah of Sunni Islam, which is Anthony's God. You must also be aware of him. You also must be aware of him. For he has greatly resisted our words. Exactly. Perry Robinson tried to be nice. William did and I did. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. Finally, 1718. Scroll down. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me. This is our hope and our confidence. From every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, pray for my throat, my chest. God will give me perfect healing. And strengthen my throat, my chest, and my voice to use to glorify the Lord Jesus. Now, you know what I asked you not to do. Stop being their messenger, boys and girls. I don't need to hear about them. Let me focus on the topics. Like tomorrow, Lord willing, I want to do Marian Doctrines Part 5. Please let me focus. Don't defend me. You're not of Sam Shimon. Don't attack those who attack me. Defend the glory of Christ. The honor of the gospel. And the honor of the church. Be zealous for that. And we had a good group. We had close to 390. So glory to God. The numbers are increasing. Increasing. May they increase more for the glory of Jesus. Pray for my health, my daughter's health, safety, salvation, holiness, and provision. And the Lord bring them to me sooner than later. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Father, mercy, Son of mercy, Holy Spirit, have mercy. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Uh, I have a prayer request for the people who are in the live chat. Uh, I am working with a couple of people. Uh, please pray for them, that the Lord will give them the zeal to understand the Bible and come to the true God. They are out of Islam, and uh, now they are uh, in a spiritual journey. So please pray for them, and so that I will soon testify that they have accepted our true lord god so that would so, be my prayer request amen they're going to pray for you and your family your ministry but you couldn't wait for me to finish the prayer for you inter interrupt me bro no you said go on no but when i said and you came in and said something did i okay yeah but anyway take beer Al all right christ is risen risen indeed amen